football fans and welcome to Bishop Dwanger football on BDHS Media Productions. We are broadcasting live from Bishop Dwanger High School where tonight the Saints welcome the Carroll Chargers to Shields Field in a much anticipated showdown of SAC powers. Alongside Corey Kitchen, I'm Eric Pete. Corey, it's not often we see the Saints in bounce back mode after a tough loss, but that's the position that Jason Garrett and company find themselves tonight and they'll do so against a Carroll squad in what amounts to be a must-win game for both teams as it comes to the SAC title race. Yeah, you're exactly right. I think uh, our friend the Swami named it uh, an elimination game in the SAC tonight. Yep. And uh, you're right, uh, Coach Garrett, uh, and another stat for you, never lost two in a row. Yep. So, uh yeah, I want to get that in before you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, BD comes in 3-1, and one, averaging 38 points a game, Eric, giving up 23 points a game. Carroll comes in 3-1, and one, averaging 38 points a game, giving up 22 points a game. Yeah. So, you know, these teams could not be more evenly matched in a lot of ways. Carroll's strength of schedule may be slightly better with that Snyder win. Right. Uh, but... Uh, but anyway, Carroll's rolling in with three sta straight wins after losing the shootout to Lures in week one. Yeah, we're going to be a ball game tonight. And Bishop Dwenger, of course, trying to erase the memory of that hard-fought loss here at Shields Field just one week ago to the Homestead Spartans, the Spartan squad that just has their number in the SAC. It, it's just crazy when you look at the numbers, Corey. Bishop Dwenger in the last three years since the start of 2019, 0-3 against Homestead. 19-0 against the rest of the conference. 0-2 oh, at Shields Field and 12-0 against everyone else. And at this point, we are going to step aside for an opening prayer and pledge of allegiance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, a good and gracious Father, we ask that you come down upon us, be with us, to bless us, to keep these players safe, and that they all may uh, be true disciples and play as Christian spirits. We ask this all in your son's name. Amen. Please remain standing and join Bishop Dwayne's senior Gabrielle Shila in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocky breakers, the bumper steaming, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the We 
are ready for some football here at Shields Field. And Corey, just before we put the Homestead game to bed, I know Bishop Dwenger fans and players want to put it behind them, and, and we hope that they have, but we would be remiss if we did not, you know, at least acknowledge the historical significance of that loss. It's the worst loss in the Jason Garrett era, losing by 16 points. The first time they've lost by double digits, which is more astounding than anything else, I think. Yeah. And it's the most points they've allowed, being 37 points last week, since a 42 nothing loss to Homestead in 2017. That's a stretch of 54 games. Uh, so it definitely uh, hit the Richter scale here at Bishop Dwinger High School, and I don't think the uh, – coaching staff uh, left any stone unturned this week. Yeah, I'm sure of it. And, uh, you know, last week we came into that game with Homestead coming off a loss, and I said, you know, you really don't want to play a team coming off a loss because right. they have uh, they've licked their wounds and fixed all of their ailments. Yeah. Well, let's hope that the Saints have done that this week. So both teams out on the field. Saints captains lining up ready to walk towards the midfield stripe. Gives us a chance to thank our game sponsor tonight, our scoreboard sponsor, St. Anne Communities. St. Anne's offers rehab, a nursing facility, memory care, as well as assisted and residential living, and is the only senior living community in Fort Wayne that offers daily mass and sacraments. St. Anne's is proud to support the Saints and the many fighting Irish from Central Catholic that reside at their facility. Corey, let's talk about some keys to tonight's game. I think, Eric, the, the Saints have got to slow the, down the Carroll offense, can't make this a track meet. I think they need to keep the score in the 20s probably to have a real shot of winning this football game. Slowing down that Carroll offense starts with uh, stopping their run and containing quarterback Jeff Becker. What I mean by that is they've got to stop their running plays and keep Becker in the pocket on passing plays. If the Saints can bring edge pressure, which they're very good at, they, uh, they keep Becker in the pocket and not allow him to get loose and create broken plays in the air or with his feet. Then they can slow down that Carroll offense, limit their possessions, run the football themselves to control that clock and, and the tempo of the game. And then finally, control and field position with special teams was huge last week as Homestead owned that field position battle all night long against the Saints. It could be a factor again as Carroll has a pretty good kicking game as well. That they do. You mentioned Carroll with those three straight wins. They come in with a, an identical 3-1 and one record in Class 6A. The Saints uh, dropped down to number five in Class 5A after the loss. No big surprise there. Uh, and as they come into this matchup, we see the opening uh, ceremonies there with a the coin flip. Uh, Corey, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Dwenger starts the game. You know, last week they started strong in the opening series with a 58-yard touchdown run by K.J. Tipman, but every time the Saints struck, Homestead had an answer. Uh, you know, that opening salvo by Bishop Dwenger is answered on an 80-play, or I'm sorry, 80-yard touchdown pass on the first offensive snap for Homestead to Nate Anderson. Uh, and you go to the second half when Dwenger drew within two scores. The next play was a 90-yard kickoff return by Nate Anderson. So the Saints are usually the team that has an answer for every team, and they got a taste of their own medicine last week. They, yeah, no doubt about it, they did. And you're right, I think getting off to a good start is critical for both teams tonight. Let's check in for the first time with Sean McBride down on the sideline. Sean? Great to be with you tonight, gentlemen. Thanks very much for the intro right there. An absolutely stunning night here in Northeast Indiana. Winds out of the uh, the Southwest, really not going to be much of a factor. If you look at Old Glory, not a lot of dancing around. When we look at the coin toss tonight, the Saints have deferred. Uh, will kick towards the south end zone where Carroll will receive. So tonight we will get a look, a first look, at the Dwinger defense. Back up to you. All right, thank you, Sean. Looking forward to that Dwinger defense. Played well for big stretches of the season and challenged for the first time last week. I really think this is the uh, the battle of the night, the Dwinger defense against yeah. the Carroll offense. Carroll's got a three-headed monster on offense. They've got their South Dakota State quarterback commit, Jeff Becker. Uh, they've got their wide receiver, Jamison Coverstone, who's got 19 catches, 428 yards, six touchdowns. Nobody else on their team has more than seven catches this season. Yeah. And then their running back, Luke Carmody, 39 carries, 315 yards, averaging over eight yards a carry. So those three run that Carroll offense. And the best stat for Dwanger fans, Saints are 3-0 and with me behind the mic. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Zinger. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, we thank Sean for filling in last week. Thanks for giving me my spot back. <laughs> 
opening kick is away, and here we go. Fielded at the 13-yard line. Here comes Coverstone, and he slips and falls as he crosses the 20. Yeah, good start to uh, one way or another. Good start for the Dwinger special teams, uh, making Carroll have to go uh, get the started here on the 21. So Jeffrey Becker, the senior signal caller, will lead the Charger offense out onto the field. He is in his third year starting and leading this offense. Committed and to South Dakota State. Do you know the South Dakota State mascot, Eric? Those are the Jackrabbits? The Jackrabbits, there one of go. my favorites, yeah. I can't stump you. <laughs> you may yet before the night's out. Spread formation for Carroll. Becker will hand it off. Carmody looking for the left edge, and he is just barely going to get a yard on that play. I've always said about the Carroll offense that uh, they don't really want to run the football. They right. really would pr much prefer to pass it. Uh, they run it just to keep people honest. And, uh, in fact, their leading rusher is their quarterback, Jeff Becker. Yep. Some are designed runs. Some are just him taking off. Shotgun again. Trips to the far side of the field. Here's Becker on second and nine. He'll fake the handoff, keep it. He's got some pressure, able to step up and forward and falls down right back at the original line of scrimmage. That is exactly according to script for that Saints defense. They had outside pressure, forced him up into the pocket, and then were able to collapse that pocket and, and take him down. That's big, big time play defensively and going to set up a third and long. Again, shotgun with twins to each side. Third and a long eight for Becker, trying to draw the Saints defense off sides, and we have a flag. This one might be against the offense. Yep, I think uh, their talented wide receiver, Mr. Jamison Coverstone, jumped down here at the bottom of the field. Going to set up uh, third and about 14 now. Tall task for the junior Quinn Grant as he covers the speedster Coverstone. Yeah, let's hope he's got some safety help because yeah. uh, nobody in town has been able, able to cover Mr. Coverstone. Third and 13. Chargers on their opening possession looking for their first first down. Here's Becker looking to throw. He's going to step up. Fires it downfield. Coverstone streaking down the field. Catches it at the 35, 30, 20, and he will not be caught. Well, you called it, Eric. Uh, a tall task for number 39 of the Saints in single coverage there. And uh, you just can't allow really that to happen. That's not a great no. defensive decision to put uh, Quinn Grant all alone on Coverstone. Wow, just like that, an 82-yard strike from Jeffrey Becker two, to Jamison Coverstone. Two games in a row where the defense has started off the night by giving up a big play in the back end. Yeah. And that one hurts especially in coming on third and 13. Here is the PAT. Good looking kick and it is good. So your score just one minute and four seconds into the game is Carroll seven, Saints zero. We'll step aside, you're watching Bishop Dwanger football on BDHS Media Productions. Evans Toyota is locally owned and proudly supports Bishop Winger. Let's go see! Back at Shields Field, Chargers striking first on an 82-yard touchdown pass from Jeffrey Becker to Jamison Coverstone. 7-0 Chargers early. Ph phenomenal pass, quite frankly. Yeah. I, I don't know whether, uh, you know whether 39 Quinn Grant knew that Becker could throw it that far, <laughs> but that thing went at least... Let's see here. Let me do a little bit of math. I'm going to say 50, 45 yards in the air to cover Stone. I mean, that's a that's a heck of a throw at the high school level, and he did it with ease. Well, it, it's a D1 throw. That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, it is, and that's where he's going. Kickoff deep out the back of the end zone. Saints will start at their own 20. Touchback uh, it was the recipe for Homestead last week as well to make that Saints offense start from the 20 every time. Evan Jester doing the honors there for the Chargers. So 
Here come the Saints, and uh, it'll be the senior, Evan Springer, coming out at quarterback. Of course, he's one of four different Saints who saw action uh, receiving snaps last week. Bodie Dickerson was in for a drive. Sam Campbell tried out, and, and K.J. Tittman in the Wildcat formation. So we'll start with the pistol formation. Here is Springer with twins to the near side. It's going to be a pitch back to K.J. Tittman, turning it up following blockers. I think that might have been Teddy Steele, actually, on You're the right. carry. And uh, both of these units are, are, are a little bit – I would say much maligned to a certain extent that the Dwinger offense against the Carroll defense. Carroll is not known to hang their hat on defense, and our offense has uh, has gotten off to a bit of a slow start this yeah. season. So, uh, you know, this this is an interesting grudge match as well. Neither uh, neither of these units getting top billing on their team right now. And pause on the field for an injured player as they'll make it off the sideline. Let's check in with Sean McBride for the first time. Sean? Yeah, real fast, guys. Just a uh, look around the SAC tonight. Hopefully going to bring you scores throughout the night. We've got Concordia over at Northrop. Lures over at Northside. Snyder taking on Homestead. Already talked a little bit about that one. Southside's over at Wayne. Garrett and Eastside. Thought I might uh, take a look at those scores tonight for someone special in the booth. And, uh, and of course, another big one tonight. Leo taking on East Noble. So uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll hope to uh, keep you up to speed all night long. Back up to you. Thank you, Sean. Outstanding matchup. Should be some competitive games across the conference slate tonight. Second down for the Saints. Another handoff to Teddy Steele looking for the near side, and he's going to be tackled by the shoestrings at the 26. Really nice tackle by sophomore Braden Steely for the Carroll Chargers coming up from his safety position, making that tackle to hold the Saints uh, to a minimal gain there. Third and about four. Yeah, Steely is everywhere for this defense. He is quick, he is hard-hitting, and he's going to be a key to watch. To be starting in the back end of the defense at safety as a sophomore at a 6A school is pretty impressive. Yeah. That brings up a third and four. Split blacks for Springer. He's going to hand it off. Inside handoff, Teddy Steele. He's got the first down and carries the defender up to the 38-yard line. Yeah, that's a really good play and a really good uh, play call, quite frankly, to, to run the ball there on third and four. Glad to see the Saints able to be able to do that uh, and, and, and move the chains. Yeah, you know, I was gone last week, Corey, but I heard you say on the broadcast uh, you don't want Dwenger to get too cute on the play calls. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that a lot, that third and four run. Make them stop it. So first down Saints, another handoff here. This one goes nowhere. Host of white shirts in the backfield to bring Steele down at across the 37. Yeah, that's big 52 for the Carroll Chargers. Mark Murray, 6'3", 220 from his defensive line spot, able to, to pull uh, Teddy Steele down in the backfield. Second and 12 for the Saints. Again, Carroll leads 7-0, 839 to go in the opening quarter here on a beautiful night at Shields Field. I like what the Saints are doing and huddling as well against a team with a fast-paced offense. They need sure. to try to control this clock. Eye formation now for Springer under center. Pressure coming, takes a snap. He's going to have to step up out of this one. Looking for somewhere to get rid of the ball. Side steps to the right. He has a man. Sioka there looked like the pressure came right as the ball hit. I'd call that early. You're being yeah. generous there, <laughs> Eric. 14 for the Carroll Chargers. That's Aaron Stewart. Appeared to me to be on Sioka's back just a little early there, but he got away with it. So I guess no penalty if they don't call it, right? You know, honestly, I was looking to the Dwanger sideline to get an indication, and they didn't make a big fuss yeah, about it. Yeah. They're, uh, they're better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so a third and long this time. Passing situation here. They'll go trips to the far side and Springer in the shotgun. They need the 48-yard line for a first down. Springer fires it, has Sioka, makes a diving catch. He's going to be about a yard and a half short of the marker. Quite frankly, 
I thought he was all over him on that one as yeah. well, the defender. But again, this is sort of the fundamental thing that we come back to from a couple of weeks ago. When yeah. you run that route, you have got to get to the sticks. And Rocco Sioka is a senior leader on this team. He needs to be in first down territory there when he makes that catch. That's it right there. Fourth and one, an early turning point here for the Saints. Springer comes to the sideline. K.J. Tittman enters the game, as does Sam Campbell, and now a timeout. Yeah, that's a, you know, an unnecessary one to use it so early, yeah. but I think they realize how big a, big a play this is for, uh, for the Dwinger offense at this juncture of the game. Big fourth down on the other side of this break. As we step aside, you're watching Bishop Dwinger football on BDHS Media Productions. and one for the Saints. They keep their offense out on the field. They go package I form it, or excuse me, power I, Eric, Yeah. with Sam Campbell under center. Let's see what they have here. Campbell makes the handoff. Aziz Dixon through the middle. He's going to have the first down. Just barely, but he got it, and uh, that's big for the Saints. They really needed that with eight minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, yeah. You didn't want to give the ball back to the Carroll Chargers on, on your side of the midfield mark. You like the aggressive play call at this stage of the game? Well, I think at fourth and one, you probably had to at this early. And, yeah. uh, you know, you know there's three kinds of people in this world. Particularly when you know what kind of offense the other team possesses. Right. So, ball on the Bishop Dwinger 49-yard line. And Springer's in the shotgun this time. Going to fake the handoff, roll to his right, fire down the sideline, Henry O'Keefe. Probably would be walking into the end zone right now if he had not slipped and fallen on that route. Yep, he slipped coming out of the route on the break or the cut, and uh, you're probably right. It was wide open, and uh, Springer mm. saw that, threw it before he completed his cut, which you're supposed to do. Right. And, uh, and O'Keefe just uh, didn't wasn't able to get to it after the slip. I like the play action. The play action rollout uh, was a nice first down call. Springer was 15 for 25 last week, 144 yards. A bulk of those coming in the second half when the game was already in hand. But if nothing else, helped him build confidence. Here is second down. Springer looks to throw. He's got a man out in the flats again and nearly caught in but dropped. This time Stellan Rustin, the tight end. Went with the same route. It worked last time. They're going to do it again. What they're doing there with two deep safeties that the Carroll Chargers have, there is a pocket open behind the corner and between the safety and the sideline, and the Saints are attacking that. They did it on two straight plays and had guys open on two straight plays yeah. but have been unable to connect. That's going to bring up another third and long, this time third and ten. Dwinger goes pass, pass. And now has a big third down awaiting them with seven and a half minutes to go in this opening quarter. Play clock down to two, down to one. Springer does get the snap off. He's got some pressure, rolls to his right, fires it down the sideline, and trying to make a comeback for it was Sioka, and not nearly enough on that to get there. Yeah, just double covered. Uh, you know, Evan probably could have ran that for some yardage. He had some daylight in front of him and uh, chose to, to make a throw kind of into traffic there, and the Saints are going to end up having to punt. There was a flag down anyway, it looked like, but it's it's been uh, declined, and the Saints send out the punt yep. unit. A holding against the Saints will be declined, as you said. Yeah, that's where, uh, that's where you kind of miss that dual threat ability of the quarterback position. If uh, Bodie Dickerson had been in there, maybe he would have tucked it and run, but. Exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. So fourth and ten punting situation and end over end punt. This one's going to take a Bishop Dwanger bounce. And now back the other way, fielded at the 24-yard line. Good punt. That's 81 on the punt for the Saints. Uh, that's Joseph Moran getting an opportunity to, uh, to be the punter tonight. 
So the Chargers back on offense. We'll see what Becker and company have up their sleeves this time. Already with a 7-0 lead as we are at 7-15 in the opening quarter. Well, I hope the Saints don't uh, go man-to-man -man on Coverstone all night long without any safety yeah. help. It's going to be a long evening if that's the case. This time Noah Johnson on the assignment. We'll keep an eye on that as Becker stands in the shotgun. He's going to keep it this time, design quarterback run, and takes a big hit up at about the 28-yard line, but pops right up. Yeah, really nice job there by Adam Lee coming in, K.J. Tipman there as well. K.J., interesting to bring up. It's really yeah. the first time we've seen him with any significant defensive snaps this year, and he's playing defensive line tonight. I assume that is to, uh, to get some pressure on Mr. Becker. Well, and that is key. I mean, uh, Peyton Slavin almost had no pressure on him last week, and – just was comfortable in the pocket all night long, picking apart the Dwinger defense. They really miss Jack Tipman, who's yeah. out with an injury. They do. Going to be second and five after the run by Becker. Zings it out to the right sideline, caught by Mason Rudolph. I'm sorry, not Mason Rudolph. That's an <laughs> NFL player. Cooper Rudolph. Yeah, that's a nice really nice play just kind of a, a deep hitch route and he was wide open based on the cushion that the Saints were giving at the corner spot there looked like Sam Campbell was at corner first down Carroll quickly up to the line Becker's going to keep this one trying to elude Gavin Groves Groves pulls him down from behind really nice job by Groves to to pull down Becker and that's no easy task uh, Jeff Becker comes in at 6'1 200 pounds he's He's a big quarterback, quite frankly, particularly in the run game to have to tackle. Yeah. So the Saints up to the task on that rush up to the line on first and ten. Brings up a second and a short nine yards. Spread formation once again. Twins to each side. Becker looking to throw. We've got a flag. We'll blow this dead before it starts. Procedure. Start, yep, coming back. Going to bring up second and about uh, 14. Yeah, you mentioned uh, K.J. Tittman on the defensive line. I was wondering, as we saw Teddy Steele open the yeah. game at running back, I wonder if we'll see K.J. on offense at all tonight or if he's strictly defense. Well, they're, obviously they're planning to play him there quite a bit if they've got Teddy starting it in the backfield. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, they're looking for some depth at the D-line spot. Second and 14, Becker looks to throw again. Setting up a screen, caught on the left side. And another flag is a beautiful tackle made by Sam Campbell. Yeah, Sam Campbell did a great job coming up and taking that screen head on. And I think uh, the Carroll Chargers are going to get hit for an illegal block downfield as well. Okay. Or a hold, maybe a hold. Same thing. We'll check and see what the official call is. And it is a hold. So they'll take the penalty yardage there. Yeah, it's a tough one. Particularly, <laughs> you're running the offense, and one of your receivers is out holding on a screen. It doesn't make you particularly happy. <laughs> the uh, Carroll Chargers offense is uh, coordinated by Andy Papagianis. Andy, former St. Francis uh, and Carroll alum, and uh, does a great job with their spread passing game. We'll see what he dials up on a second and 24. Trips to the far side for Becker. He rolls in that direction. Fires it across and caught by Rudolph. Hit immediately as he goes down to the ground. Yeah, nope, that up. wasn't. Looks like number 11 yeah. there. A.J. lays off. Okay, lays off. Good job uh, on, this, on the coverage by the Saints. They're holding him to a fairly minimal gain, but uh, with that long yardage situation, I think uh, the Chargers were just looking to make that third and somewhat manageable. It's going to bring up a third and 13. Five wideouts this time for Becker, alone in the backfield. Looking to throw. Fires it across the middle in no man's land, incomplete. And the Saints have stopped the Chargers on their second offensive possession. Yeah, that was intended for a crossing route. Number seven, Hanson Hafner, sophomore there. Uh, his dad, Tim, was the quarterback for Snyder back in uh, the late mid to late 80s when they went down to uh, the RCA Dome. A really good Snyder team. Tim Hafner was on and quarterbacked. Von Dunbar in the backfield. <laughs> 
Good old days. Brocker Orbacher. Uh, you got me there, Corey. You, I got you, you all you have me on. Uh, Snyder football trivia. Yeah, old man trivia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> this punt is going to be touched up at the 25, and that's where the Saints will take over. All right. Well, that's a great stop by the Dwinger Saints defense. Now the offense uh, needs to move the ball down the field a little bit here. Yep. Just a big night for the Saints trying to bounce back. You mentioned at the outset of the broadcast, Corey, never losing back-to-back -back games under head coach Jason Garrett. They're 5-0 and after a loss. Trying to keep that streak going tonight. Two wideouts to the near side. Now a man in motion. That's O'Keefe. And a handoff through the middle. Not much there. Maybe two yards. Yeah, just a little uh, inside zone play to steal. And uh, Carroll defensive line kind of vacuumed that up pretty easily. They've got some size up front. Uh, do the Carroll Chargers. You know, 23 up there on the front line. That's Ashton Pasetsky is a sophomore, 6'2", 205. Uh, and then we talked about the other defensive linemen earlier. They, they do have some size in their 3-4 defense. Springer under center this time on second and nine. Hand off again. This time, nice hole there for Teddy Steele as he falls forward up to the 33, gained about six yards. Yeah, going to bring up, uh, look like a, just an isolation play out of the uh, I formation. Going to bring up again third and about three. Very manageable. Saints ran on the last third and short they had. Using a little bit of the clock. I like that. Third and three for Springer. Standing in the shotgun, here's the snap. Handoff, Dixon tries to find the edge and he is not going anywhere. Yeah, the Carroll Chargers had that one snuffed out almost as if they read the signal in from the sideline. Mm -hmm. They knew that was gonna be a, a power play uh, and were able to get to it very easily. A quick three and out for the Saints and the dangerous Carroll offense is gonna get the ball right back. Speaking of dangerous, Coverstone's their return guy back, Eric, and uh, we certainly don't want to kick it to him, I don't believe. Oh. Well, we also don't want to do that. No. Off the side of the punter's foot, and the Chargers are going to start this possession in Dwanger territory. Wow, at the 35. 35. Holy smokes. Yeah, that's something that uh, the Saints have not done much in, in uh, the four years uh, in this uh coaching staff where they've had any trouble in special teams so interesting yeah although you know last week we talked about the saints getting a taste of their own medicine i mean yeah. that was across the board field position battle they normally win that was the way of homestead uh special teams homestead had the kickoff return for touchdown had a field goal as well saints trying to get back to the way things were. Here's Becker across the middle. Sam Campbell with a nice really? read on that one. Gets his mid in there and knocks it down. Really nice coverage. Uh, great job of attacking that out route by Sam Campbell. Good anticipation there and uh, was able to knock it down. Second and 10. Chargers back to the line quickly. Here is Becker. Spread formation, two to each side. Here is the snap. This time Becker keeps it himself, takes another big hit, but manages to pick up about four yards. Yeah, he's uh, he is taking a beating in there from the Saints D. They'll hit you. And uh, Vogelweed in there, it looked like. Maybe Cole Carey as well did a good job of, uh, of sticking Mr. Becker. If he's going to run it, they're going to make him pay for it. So a big third down, third and six. Becker in the pistol. Here's a snap, looking to throw, looks left, looks left, has all the time in the world, now fires it down the right sideline and unable to hook up with the intended receiver. That was Gabe Starks. Really good job of coverage in the back end of the defense. We gave him a hard time on that first series, but uh, the Saints defense, I mean, Becker had all day 
to throw. Yeah. They did not get much pass rush up front. And the secondary did not allow any receivers really to come open. So great job by the secondary there. And it looks like Carroll's going to line up for a long kick. Yeah. So this is going to be a 48-yard attempt for Sebastian Lopez, who hit a 48-yarder last week. Snap is down. Kick is up. It's got enough leg. Boy, does it ever. But it is wide left. Hooked it just a little bit, but wow, that's a big leg. Yeah. So how about that series for the Saints defense? They spot the ball in the 35 and yield nothing. Yeah, you talk about your backs against the wall in a sudden, yeah. sudden change situation, and uh, they rose to the occasion. Nothing but positive for the Saints on, on D there. Yeah, and, and really just for that uh, broken play, or I should say just – busted coverage on that 82-yard touchdown pass, that's really the only play that the Saints defense has yielded. Yeah. So the Saints take over on their own 31-yard line. Two wideouts to the near side, Sioka and O'Keefe. Here's a snap for Springer, hands off Teddy Steele, this time looking around the left side and spun down after not even able to get back to the line. Yeah, Teddy, Teddy's a quick running back, but he's not that guy really that, that gets you a lot of yardage between the tackles because he's, he's not real big in stature. Right. So uh, he's more of a guy that I would use uh, off the edge than I would inside. But uh, and, and, and that time the Carroll Chargers were able to, uh, to kind of pull him down like a rag doll. Yeah, we've talked uh, throughout the season about the stable of running backs Bishop Dwinger churns out every year, but sometimes you miss that hard downhill runner in K.J. Tittman. Steal again around the left side this time, the right side, I'm sorry. And again, no gain on the play. Yeah, they're finding it difficult right now to get anything going in the running game, and part of that is because they haven't had much going in the passing game for four weeks. Yeah. allows that defense to keep inching their way towards the line of scrimmage. Yeah, almost baiting Springer to beat them through the air, and, you know, they've had a couple plays where – They've had someone open, and Springer just not able to get the ball to him. Yeah, not all his fault. I mean, right. he had a receiver, receiver fall down on one of those. So it's going to be third and ten as we tick down inside 20 seconds in the opening quarter. Trips to the far side. Here's Springer. Steps up in the pocket. He's got some pressure, and he goes down in the backfield. Yep, the Chargers were able to get in there. Honestly, I thought he had enough time to get rid of the football. Just couldn't find anybody open or couldn't pull the trigger to make the decision to make the throw. I thought the, I thought the, uh, the protection was actually fairly good. Aaron Jackway on the sack, and that brings us to the end of the opening quarter. Your score after one, Carroll seven and Bishop Dwinger zero. You're watching Bishop Dwinger football on BDHS Media Productions. Can First Source help me get more space? We can help with that. Does First Source have banking that can keep up with me? This is open around the clock. Business is booming. Can you help me expand? No problem. Can First Source help me turn this into my own business? We're here for you. No matter what kind of banking you need, First Source Bank can help. Welcome back at Shields Field. Your first quarter sponsor tonight was Illumination Solutions Incorporated, a locally owned family business that creates exterior lighting upgrades for homes and businesses throughout Northeast Indiana and Northwest Ohio. Learn more about this proud Dwanger family run business by visiting their website, www.illuminationsolutions.com. Back to punt are the Saints on a fourth and 15. This kick, looking much better than the last one, is going to be fair caught at the 39-yard line. Let's check in with Sean McBride. All right, guys, got some scores from around the area. Uh, Northside on top of Lures, 3-0. to zero. Got Snyder on top of Homestead, 7-0. to zero. And finally, a, uh, an interesting score, Leo 16, East Noble 0. Back Whoa. up to you. That's a bit of a shocker for right. me. Leo, who throws the ball about three or four times a game. Yeah. Uh, 
Coach Souter has a great running game, but his uh, the excitement level of that for me as a former offensive coordinator and quarterback uh, leaves a bit to be desired. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Like watching paint dry, but it yeah. seems to be effective. They've got a big offensive line. they got a Division One a commit or two right. up front and uh, are just pounding people. Well, you know, when you got a strength, uh, yeah. you challenge people to stop it, and if they can't, you keep going with it. That's kind of been the M.O. of the Saints as well over the years, running the football. So there was a penalty that's going to march this one back to the 29-yard line. First down run, it is Carmody, and he picks up seven yards on first down. That's a really nice little run there for the Carroll Chargers. Looked like uh, 64 Ethan Fluger was in there finally making the tackle, but uh, Carroll, if they can pick up eight yards on a running play, they are going to be tickled to death. Second and two, here is Becker in the shotgun. Fakes it to Carmody this time, keeps it himself through the middle. And backs his way up to the 39. He's right at the first down marker. A little quarterback power counter type of play there where they pull the backside guard out in front of Becker. And uh, is it a first down or isn't it? They're uh, kind of, yep. Uh, nope, it is. They're going to okay. call it a first down. Late signal, but they do give it to him. So trips to the near side this time for Becker. Here's a snap, fakes it to Carmody, looks to throw, now swings it back to him and just Ooh. left it short there. Yeah, the Saints are really fortunate, I think, that, uh, that Becker short-armed that one because uh, the running back for the Chargers, that was 22, Luke Carmody, had all kinds of green real estate yeah. over there. <laughs> he could have taken that quite a, quite a ways. Yep, had some blockers set up too. Instead, a second and ten. Becker with the snap, fakes it, looking to throw. He's got some pressure, fires it out into the flats. It is caught and across the midfield stripe, spinning out of one tackle and finally wrestled down at the 43. That's 11. A.J. Lazoff, senior, 5'10", 175. Caught, got him on a little crossing route there. And uh, as you mentioned, Eric, he broke two or three tackles. Big play for them. That moves the ball into Saints territory at the 43, first and 10 Chargers. Here's Becker, fires it down the sideline, single coverage for Rudolph, and it is hauled in. Incredible catch. Sam Campbell was draped all over him. That was great coverage by Campbell. I can't believe that he was able to sneak that ball in there. But you know what he did is he threw it to the outside shoulder and allowed his receiver to make a play on it, and Rudolph did. Yep, very similar to a play by Springer last week where he did not get it to the outside shoulder, and it was picked off. First and goal chargers just like that at the five-yard line. Becker rolls left, looking for Coverstone. It is caught, and it is a Carroll touchdown. Too easy by Jamison Coverstone. He ran a little out route, and as he made his cut, a little shoulder nudge on the defender yep. to create some separation there. Sometimes you can get an offensive pass interference call on that, but uh, the, uh, the official did not think it was enough contact, and uh, he Swung wide open, and it was an easy pitch and catch. So the Chargers strike again in the opening minutes of the second quarter. And now the PAT is up, and it is good. 14-0 with 10.29 to go until halftime. Chargers on top of the Saints here at Shields Field. We'll step aside. You're watching Bishop Dwenger football on BDHS Media Productions. You know, there's three kinds of people in this world, those that get the numbers and those that don't. If you need professional help when it comes to the numbers, whether it's payroll, accounting, or professional or personal taxes, come see the experts at Management and Tax Services. Proud to be Dwinger supporters for over 60 years. Back at Shields Field, 14-0 Chargers. After that quick strike, beautiful sideline throw from Becker 
to Rudolph that set it up on the five yard line and then connecting with his senior wideout, Jamison Coverstone in the end zone for six. I don't want to steal Stats Thompson's thunder, but as I look over his shoulder <laughs> here, the story of the game, Eric, Carroll's run 17 plays for 187 yards. The Saints have run 16 plays for 24 yards. Eesh. That's not going to get you very far. Kickoff is away. Fielded at the one. Here comes O'Keefe. Senior speedster through the middle and is able to take it up to the 28-yard line. Nice return by Henry yeah. O'Keefe. And quite honestly, the Saints have got to do things in their offense to get their playmakers touches. Henry O'Keefe, Rocco Sioka, K.J. Tipman, yep. Aziz Dixon, those guys need touches in, in this ball game. You've got to do screens. You've got to do things like that, easy routes. Do things that Evan can do offensively. Find out what he's good at right. and do those things. Yeah, tailor the offense to his skill set. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they'll come out in I formation now. Springer under center. Here's a snap. And no hole there whatsoever. Looks like Aziz Dixon on the carry. Yep. One of the things that uh, one of the things that I learned as an offensive coordinator the hard way is sometimes it's not plays, it's players. Yep. And you need to find ways to get your players the football. Well, K.J. Tittman ran out of the field for a second and then came back off. I think uh, getting him involved in the run game would be a nice change of pace here. I agree with that. They need him offensively, quite honestly. Yeah, much like Devin Tittman last year. Second and 10, Springer to the sideline and overthrows O'Keefe. It's going to be third and long. And he wasn't open anyway, quite honestly. I mean, they, the Saints have shown no ability to throw the ball down the field, so the secondary is coming up real tight in coverage. Yeah, you know, the couple shots they've taken tonight, you had a, you had a receiver fall down, and you had another time where, you know, there was some contact made. But Springer's balls were actually pretty accurate. Yeah. I, I'd be surprised if they don't go back there sometime soon. Third and ten Saints in desperate need of a first down. Springer's got pressure setting up a screen. Aziz Dixon on the catch. He's got some blockers, but he's going to be brought down one yard short. Not quite enough. I do like the play call, though. Really yeah. nice looking screen that they were able to get to Dixon. It'll give him a chance to do something in space. But it uh, looks like they're going to need to punt it away. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> they're thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> Last time, they've already gone for one fourth and one in uh, enemy territory, or I should say in their own territory. Converted that one, but they at least look to keep the punting unit on the field here. And they do. Boot this one away. This one's a better punt. It is fielded with a fair catch at the 32-yard line. Hanson Hafner, sophomore for the Chargers, in on that fair catch. Well, Corey, here comes the Bishop Dwanger defense, and this is something that we talked about after the Homestead game a bit. When the offense is struggling, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Your defense doesn't have to go out and win the game, but it sure as heck has to keep you in the game. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. And the Saints defense, quite honestly, has been able to do that for the better part of four years. Yeah. So, uh, and they've put a lot of pressure on them in the, the, over that four-year period. You're right. But uh, they've been up to the challenge. We'll see if they can hang in there now. First and ten. Here is Becker. Got some pressure off the corner. Rolls to his left, trying to find the edge. And the Saints get him out of bounds after just a short gain of a yeah, yard. Yeah, they do a pretty good job there. I was really scared for a moment because the last thing you want to do is give him an edge to run. Uh, normally we like to bring pressure from the edge and keep him in the pocket. They gave him a free edge, but great job by Gavin Groves and the rest of that defense to track him down and keep him to just a gain of one. Becker dangerous on the ground, had 66 yards rushing last week. Second and nine. Setting up a comeback route. He's got some blockers. Coverstone through the middle. 
trying to squeeze his way out of the pile and is able to pick up a Carroll first down. Yeah, nice little wide receiver slip screen there to their guy Coverstone. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that, that I'm talking about for the Saints on offense. Right. They need to be able to, you know, that, that is an easy pitch and catch to get the ball to, your, to one of your playmakers. First down, Becker fires quickly, sideline. Coverstone, and just like that, eight yards for the Carroll Chargers. Yeah, and that was a three- or four-yard pass route that they get in one of their playmakers' hands, and he's able to turn it into an eight-yard game. Yeah. So far tonight, Becker has been getting the ball out of his hands quickly, not really giving the Saints defense much of a chance to pressure him. Yeah, the pass rush hasn't uh, been existent just because of that speed. You're exactly right. Second and two, Becker this time has all day, looks for Coverstone down the sideline, caught at the 15, and he's walking into the end zone for six more Carroll points. Yeah, once again, the Saints man coverage over there on Coverstone, and uh, when you do that, you're taking a big gamble, and it uh, did not pay off on that play. Nope. No, it did not. That's twice the Saints have been burnt on single coverage, both time by Coverstone and both for touchdowns. Beautiful throw, quite yeah. frankly. You know, it looked like a little bit of a double move route, and uh, Becker had all day to throw and and just threw an absolute dime. PAT is good. The Carroll faithful on their feet. They see their Chargers out to a 21-0 lead in second quarter action here at Shields Field. We'll step aside. You're watching Bishop Dwanger football on BDHS Media Productions. St. Anne Communities is a senior living community including a rehabilitation center, memory and dementia care, assisted and residential living, as well as a nursing facility that served the community for over 54 years. While offering a Christ-centered environment that is the only place in Fort Wayne that offers daily mass and sacraments. For more information on employment, senior living, or to make a gift to support the first floor renovation campaign, please visit us at our website or give us a call. We are back at Shields Field, and we're going to send things down to Sean McBride. Sean? Hey, guys, just uh, some uh, second quarter updates for a year from around the area. Leo on top, 16-6 to over uh, East Noble. Lures finally gets on the scoreboard, 7-3. to Snipe, 14 to 0 over Homestead. Northrop, 7-0. to uh, Wayne, 14-0. to And Huntington North on top, 7-0. to Back up to you. All right, thank you, Sean. Kick off, Henry O'Keefe from the two-yard line. Oh, wrangled down by the neck. Outstanding play, Jorge Faldez mm. for the Carroll Chargers. Chargers down there, number eight. Great job on special teams coverage there to, uh, to pull O'Keefe down inside the 15. Yeah. That's not easy to do. Oh, and that's just the, you know, you're coming off some really bad offensive series, and now you've got to start back at your own 12-yard line. Yeah. Uh, you know, not the field position the Saints were looking for. They're kind of getting beaten all facets of the game right now. They are. They absolutely are. They'll send Stellan Rustin back out of the line. Here's a shotgun for Springer. Inside handoff. To K.J. Tipman. They went to K.J., first offensive series of the night for him, I believe. Picks up a yard. Saints have, uh, in past years, had a lot of success running the football against a smaller Carroll front, but you mentioned there's some size this year for Carroll. Yeah, they do have some size, and uh, like I said, they don't normally hang their hat on defense, uh, do the Carroll Chargers, in my opinion, but, uh, but they are certainly up to the task so far this evening. Saints in need of a spark on offense. They'll go two wideouts to the far side, and here's Springer in the shotgun. Man in motion and a flat. I think we might have run out of time. Mm. Yeah, when things are going bad, they're really going bad. Yeah. Delay a game on the Saints. Yeah, KJ throws his arms up in disgust. You know, Corey, we're still mid-second quarter. There's all the time in the world left. Uh, you're looking for kind of a, a calming presence on the Dwanger sideline or in the huddle. 
We'll yeah. see if some of that senior leadership can kind of get everyone together yeah, here. You want to talk about some adversity. Down 21 to nothing, se second and 14 from your own nine-yard line. Yeah, that'll do it. So twins to each side now for Springer. Looking to throw, looking to throw, has time, rolls out, tucks it down, and finally gets rid of the football looking for Carter Minix. Yeah, he had uh, he had Henry O'Keefe on a shorter route there, but I don't know if he saw him. Uh, yeah. It just didn't look like he saw him, and Henry broke free maybe uh, just after uh, he had already decided to take a little deeper shot down the field. Yeah, Springer, he, that time he had some time to throw, uh, and sometimes you see the quarterback try to dance out of the pocket too early or give up on a route too early. Uh, Springer is still trying to find that groove, trying to get his uh, head on straight here as he faces a third and 14. Back to pass again. Fires it across the middle. O'Keefe has it at the 26. Shakes one tackle and is taken down at the 27. Yeah, positive play there. They got the ball in the hands of a playmaker. I was a little bit concerned they had two receivers in the same spot. Yeah. Carter Minix was there too. Could have made that catch had O'Keefe not stepped in front of him. That can't be how the play was designed, <laughs> but either way, it worked out for the Saints in that instance, and a big play when they needed one. Yep. Picked up the first down. Springer looks to throw again. This one nearly picked. Looked like a miscommunication on the route there, and Ethan Bupre leapt up and nearly had that one go in his fingertips. Yeah, Evan doesn't seem real comfortable back there right now. To me, he's not really stepping into his throw, kind of throwing off balance and, and not real accurate on that one. Second and 10 Saints, spread formation. Springer to throw again. Looking, looking, firing over the middle. Minix has it this time. He is met immediately. He'll pick up about five yards. Yeah, had a lot of time. Got, to, got to picked up Minix, as you mentioned, Eric, on that crossing route. But good defense by the Carroll Chargers. I think that was 14 on the tackle. That's Aaron Stewart. And uh, going to bring up third and about five. Again, another big third down for the Saints offense. Springer. Flushes to his left, hit right as he throws, and what a leaping grab by Rocco Sioka. I can't believe, number one, that he was able to get the ball off. <laughs> right. And then secondarily, it looked like it went right through the hands of a defender to Sioka. But that's the kind of stuff we were talking about earlier. Your big play guys, the Siokas and O'Keefe's, have to come through when you need them, and right now they are. Yep. And they're saying, just get us the ball yeah, and we can do the rest. absolutely, and that's outstanding. I love it. Great job by Sioka holding on to that football. He took a hit right as the ball got there. First and 10, Springer tried to go left, now comes back right and finds O'Keefe on the sideline. Nice pickup of seven yards on first down. Actually, that's Sioka over there on that sideline. And, uh, yeah, picked up about six and a half or seven. Yeah, they're starting to get the ball into the hands of their playmakers. I like it. They've yeah. sort of abandoned the run a right. little bit. I was but, about uh, to say that. But it's they're moving the football. <laughs> so We didn't expect the Saints to yeah. get the spark on offense just chucking it down the field. But And there's the, there you there's go. the presence that K.J. Tittman brings to your offense. First contact was about at the line of scrimmage, but he's able to carry defenders for another three or four yards and pick up that first down, which is just probably something that Teddy Steele doesn't have in his skill set. Right. Yep. Teddy Steele brings a lot, of, a lot of things to the table, but he does not have that downhill hard-nosed running that K.J. does. This time, quick pass. Minix catches it, runs into his own man, and is able to get forward to the 40-yard line. Again, five-yard pickup. Yeah, and, and an easy pitch and catch on a little screen, bubble screen to Minix, an athlete who can make some things happen when he's got the ball in his hands. I like what they're doing here offensively. Yep, this is finally what you talked about, Corey, setting up plays that Springer can make yeah. and setting them up for success. Absolutely. He can distribute the ball in this way. Spread formation again on second and five. 
KJ takes the handoff, cuts it back up the middle across the 35, and he's going to have another Saints first down. Yeah, you, they are really doing a nice job of mixing it up. I've been hard on Brody Dixon a little bit early in this game, but now he's doing a nice job with some balance. And you might be exactly right about the running back situation. It just seems that against this defense, KJ Tittman's a little yeah. bit better fit for the Saints in the running game. Nothing, uh, nothing against Teddy Steele, who's a fine running back, but they just need a little sure. more power powerful guy between the tackles right now. First down play. Here's KJ around the left side. Oh! Jumps over a defender and is inside the red zone for the Saints as he picks up a first down and makes a highlight reel. KJ Tittman right now is running angry. Yeah. You, know, you like that from your running back. <laughs> you know, as much as he loves playing defense and getting after the quarterback, you better believe he was licking his chops to get in here on offense. No doubt about it. He's got the Saints on the move. First and 10 on the 17. Trips to the near side. KJ again. Again follows his blockers. Inside the 10, the 5, and out of bounds at the 3. Keep feeding the big fella. Outstanding run by KJ Tittman again. And he is just, uh, he looks like he's gassed, but uh, you're at the 3-yard line, fella. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah, one more play. 3.51 to go in this, uh, in this half. Good job by Brody Dixon. Keep giving him the football. They're in a power eye here. Yep. Aziz Dixon deep, though. And Sam Campbell under center. He'll give the handoff. Dixon trying to get over that first defender and tackle by, by the ankles at the four. Yeah, good job by the Carroll defense of stifling that play. Look like number 10, Dylan Bennett, that linebacker for the Carroll Chargers in there quickly. It's the only negative thing about that uh, about that power eye is sometimes you telegraph exactly where you're going uh, by whichever side that uh, that power eye formation is set to. Right. It's gonna be another power eye on second and goal from the four. Same play. Dixon again. This time he is through the middle and in for Bishop Dwanger touchdown. Oh, that was a great offensive drive when the Saints really needed it. Give credit to Mr. Springer. We have uh, been a little bit hard on him throughout the season. But, boy, he got that drive going with that third and 14 throw to Henry O'Keefe. Yeah, and, and a great, a well-called series by offensive coordinator Brody Dixon as well. Did a nice job of giving him some things to do to distribute that football that he is very capable of. You know, Corey, I'm completely shocked that you would give an offensive coordinator credit. Yeah, how about it? <laughs> <laughs> PAT for Joe Belanda. It is up and good, and the Saints are on the board. 21-7 is the score. They still trail by two scores. Hi, but sports fan Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the we'll Barbershop Experience. St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maplecrest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. Welcome back, folks. Our second quarter sponsor is Evans Toyota, located at the corner of Lima and Coliseum and online at evanstoyota.com. Evans Toyota is a proud supporter of the SAC and Bishop Dwanger High School. See Chad Vogelweed for a Toyotally excellent buying experience. Well, Corey, we're going to see the uh, Charger offense again, and I'm, I'm a little bit bummed that one of my favorite stats coming into tonight uh, is, is just not going to happen. The last two times that Bishop Dwenger has squared off against Carroll. The Saints have held the Chargers to 33 points below their season average Ooh. in both matchups. So in 2019, Chargers came into Shields Field averaging 36 points a game. They were held to three. And last year, out at Charger Field, they came into the contest averaging 54. Saints held them to 21. Yeah, they've done the defensive job on the Carroll Chargers over the last couple of years, no doubt about it. They will need a stellar two and a half quarters of defense here if they want to come out of this one. High kickoff, fielded and taken down at the 22-yard line. Nice kickoff coverage by the Saints. Yeah, it looked like Colin Vance in there, our starting free safety in on the kickoff team to help uh, help keep that gain minimal, and uh, the Chargers are going to start from the 22. 
Well, a big series here for the Saints, Corey. We talked about last week that Homestead game. It was essentially won in the final minutes of the first half and opening drive of the second half as Homestead put together back-to-back -back scores. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, Eric. This is a big a big series right here, and uh, the Saints are going to start it with a timeout. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just want to talk about how big it is. There you go. In any case, we're going to keep it right here. But, I got a, yeah. got a shout out to my brother-in-law in watching uh, from Illinois. I think he's at swim practice or something tonight, and okay. had nothing nothing better to do than to watch <laughs> us uh, and and the Saints. So hopefully the Saints can get back in there and in this and give them something to watch. Oh, you said it. Twenty-one-seven. The Saints trailed by this same score last week here at against Homestead. Let's check in with Sean McBride. Sean? You know, guys, one of the things when we uh, look at the Carroll offense getting ready to take the field again, it's a very sophisticated look. And it all starts back with the quarterback back there. Uh, great routes, great protection, gives him lots of time. And then, of course, the dual threat with his legs. But what we saw from the Bishop Winger Saints was guts, determination, and power. And as you said before, Eric, they're going to need it all uh, to finish this game strong. Back up to you. Yep, well said which I guess is what I said, so I'm complimenting myself. <laughs> oh, well. First and 10, inside handoff. Carmody around the left side, and he has the edge. 40, 50, shoved out of bounds at the 45 just before getting to midfield. Wow, not the play you wanted to see from the Saints defense right out of the timeout. Uh, Carroll's going into sort of their two-minute drill, real hurry up yeah. pace right now going to keep that de Saints defense on its heels. First and 10 trips to the near side. Becker rolls in that direction, finds a wide open Rudolph across midfield all the way down to the Saints 42 yard line. They're just picking up yardage in chunks yeah. right now. The Saints have moved Gavin Groves down to D line now. They must really be mm. thin at that rush, rush position. Here's another first down. Carmody picking his way through the line. And that time the Saints limited him to a short game. Yeah, good job there. It looked like uh, 59 on the tackle for the Saints. And that uh, 59 is, looked like uh, Troy Tipman. Yeah, name we don't call very often. Good job, Troy. Second and eight, 222 to go until halftime. Saints would love a stop here, a chance, another chance with the offense. Becker with time, got a man in his face, tries to get rid of the football. Saints pressure gets there and finally wrangles him down at the 40-yard line. Great job of containing him by the Saints. Just what we talked about sort of in the pregame, where they need to keep him in the pocket and force him forward, and they were able to do that and get him down on the ground. Yeah, sometimes it's not getting the sack on the initial pressure. Sometimes it's keeping him contained, as you said, and... Not yeah, letting him get the edge. Yeah, if you force him outside, you give him that dual threat ability to either uh, run with his legs or create a bigger play in the passing game. So, Big third and eight for the Chargers. Trips to the near side for Becker. Here's a snap. Looks. He's got time. Fires over the middle. He has a wide open man, and he is going to walk into the end zone. Unbelievable. Wow. Blown coverage. A.J. lays off. Uh, they've sort of flooded the area over here. They had, it looked like they had three verts, three vertical routes on the right side, and the middle receiver in, of the three came wide open. Blown coverage by the Saints in the back end, and that's going to hurt. That critical, yep. critical time in the game, as you mentioned, have not been closing out halves very strong. So here comes the PAT, and it is good. 123 left on the clock. So does Dwenger have a two-minute drill available? Can they get it going, as we saw Evan Springer with the ball on the last possession? You know, Springer is able to uh, get the offense down the field on that last drive, but it was a lot of five-yard outs, ten-yard outs, do they have the capability right now to put together some big chunk plays? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough question. And, uh, you know, quite honestly, you know, it took, I don't know, that seemed like a 10, 12 play drive that it took the Saints to work their way down the field methodically. And, uh, and I think they just gave Carroll a, a, 
you know, less than five plays, a touchdown there. So it's not the kind of turnaround you're looking for when it was that difficult for you to get in the end zone. Yeah. Effortless. Yeah, it really was really in a was. lot of ways. Chunk yardage. 28-7 to seven is your score with Carroll on top. Just not something we're used to seeing in the first quarter. I mean the first half, rather. Oh. Stats Thompson has corrected me. It took the Carroll Chargers six plays. Ah. Uh, my math. I, I, I've told you from the very get-go that math was not a strong suit. So it, <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're – Kevin is there to watch out for you, Corey. That's and right. You know every time you are wrong. <laughs> Which is quite often. <laughs> well, we've seen Henry O'Keefe have some uh, electric plays in the return game. This would be a nice time to pull one out of the hat. Again, 123 to go. Here's the kickoff. O'Keefe will not get a shot at it as the ball bounces out the back of the end zone. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's that field position battle. A kicker with a big leg and able to kick it in that end zone. You just don't realize how big a weapon that is. Yep. Force the other team with a touchback to go 80 yards every time. A couple great kickers on this Carroll squad. Evan Jester, as we said, doing the kickoff duties. And then uh, Sebastian Lopez, the place kicker, missed that 48-yarder, but uh, – Boy, that leg was incredible. I, he was he could hit from 60 if he was I thought uh, lined we, up accurately. I thought we saw the best leg in the conference last week with Carter Dixon at Homestead, but Sebastian Lopez is uh, taking umbrage with that, yeah. I think. Saints spread things out on first down, trips to the near side. Springer looks in that direction, steps up into the pocket, bounced back, but is somehow able to elude the pressure and now loses the football. Ball is out. And did the Chargers recover before it went out of bounds? They did. They did. That's a, just a massive mistake. Wow. Uh, you just can't can't cough it up there, and uh, the Saints do that on the 18-yard line and give the Chargers a chance with a minute 11. The defense was still licking their wounds over here on the sidelines, and one play later they've got to go in and try yeah. to defend and hold the Chargers off before the half. This is uh, – this is getting late early, as yeah. uh, Yogi Berra once said. It was an interesting play. Springer bounced off of a defender. Instead of getting sacked, he was able to extend the play. But as a result, <laughs> the end uh, outcome was worse than it would have been with a sack. Five wide. First and ten, zings it to the sideline. Quick ten yards on that pattern. A little pick crowd over there, honestly. They... Carmody on the reception, normally running back, but he's playing slot receiver in their five wide package. And they gets out of bounds, so they don't have to waste a timeout when they still have all three remaining anyway. Yeah. You know, that's that's really great offensive efficiency there by the Carroll Chargers. Well, yeah, the only thing worse for the Saints than allowing a score in the last two minutes is allowing two scores mm. in the last two minutes, and that's what they're in danger of doing right now. Spread formation for Becker. Carmody through the middle, inside the five, and not much more. And you have your whole offense at your disposal when you've got three timeouts yeah. left. But they've got all the time in the world. They're, right. a, they're a, a quick strike offense anyway. They're going to just run this clock down, and uh, in theory they're going to try to score right before the, the final whistle. 44 seconds and counting as the clock continues to tick down here at the end of the second quarter. Which is a ton of time when you've got three timeouts left. Right. And only four yards to go to hit pay dirt. Trips to the near side for Becker. He rolls in that direction, looks to throw, looks to throw, fires into the back of the end zone, and it is caught. Carroll touchdown on the receiving end was Gabe Starks, the 5'9 junior. That's a really nice looking red zone play there. Roll out pass. They sort of flood the area. They had three receivers. They had a high, a low, a middle, and uh, just great play design by Andy Papagiannis, the Carroll offensive coordinator. Uh, just find a wide open receiver in the very corner of the end zone, and he did a great job of keeping his feet in bounds. 24.9 seconds left in the first half. And the Chargers add a second touchdown in the final two minutes. PAT is up and good. 35-7 to seven is your score in front of a silenced crowd here at Shields Field. 
We'll step aside. You're watching Bishop Dwenger football on BDHS Media Productions. Tittman Group is a family-owned business that's proud to call Fort Wayne home. We build cold storage facilities all around the United States, run one of the largest cold storage companies in the nation, and lease office space in Fort Wayne, like inside the Lincoln Tower. Hi, I'm John Tippman, president of Tippman Group, and our family has been part of the Bishop Dwanger family for many years. We are a proud supporter of Dwanger Athletics. Go Saints! Back at Shields Field, 35 to 7 is your score. Saints are shell shocked. Yeah, I, again, I don't want to steal Kevin's thunder for his halftime stats, do. but I'm starting to think well, you do. The, I was just going to bring up. <laughs> You're trying you to get ever, him back, aren't you? Have you ever seen a Saints defense give up 352 yards in a half of football? Mm. 352 in the first half. Could not tell you any memory of that. Let's see what O'Keefe can do from the two-yard line. He's got a lot of green in front of him, weaving his way through the defense, putting on the burners across midfield, 40, 35, 30, 25 before he is thrown out of bounds. No give up in that young man. Great job on the return by Henry O'Keefe and great blocking on that return team. The Saints now need to get some points here before the half, that one way or another. They are nearly, I think, in field goal range. Yeah. But, uh, but I, you know, if you dial up the best play you've got, Coach Dixon, let's see what we can do here and try to get some points on the board. They have one timeout left in their pocket. That's so a the big whole point. field is open. Yeah, that's a big point. Kind of opens up the playbook. Right. Might only have time for one offensive play. I think if it's me, I'm going to throw one up in the corner to Sioka and see if he can come down with it. But we'll see what the Saints do. Right. Here's a snap. Springer just barely controls it. He's going to throw it down the middle. Has an open man. Huge hit there. Absolutely hammered inside the five. I believe that was Carter Minix. Wow. And they're going to call, I think, a defenseless receiver uh, hit by number eight of the Carroll Chargers there in the back end. That's Jorge Valdez. And uh, I couldn't tell whether it was targeting, whether it was just defenseless. Uh, no, they're just going to say simply pass interference is they what are. they're calling. You know, I thought of all, the, of all the calls, I don't think that one fit the bill. No, that one I don't think so either. I thought the timing of that was quite good on the hit. Yeah. I just thought they were going to call it for excessive uh, physical contact in one way or another. Yeah. But, uh, but no, they don't. That's a bit of a head scratcher to me. Well, what? yeah, still going to bring up, uh, where are they going to put the ball here? They get uh, that pass interference is going to give them 15 from where they started or half the distance to the goal from the 24, so we should be at about the, at the 12. 12. Yep, that's exactly where they put it. Yep. 7.6 seconds, so I think they at least have one, maybe two more plays. I would I, do a quick I throw think, to the end zone here. Yeah, I think you've got one play. Again, I'd look for that fade to Sioka, even though there's safety help over the top over there. Well, here's that play into the end zone. It oh is my behind goodness. the receiver, nearly picked off at the goal line. I think you got to take the three here. 4.3 yeah. left. I mean, you're down 28 scores. I mean, 28 points, Corey. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you've got to have something positive heading into halftime. Three points gives you that. Down 25 at half. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe 25 versus 28. Yeah, what's mean, the difference? Still but a four-score game. I would still like to go in at halftime with something positive. Yeah. Maybe they'll get it on this play. Likely the last play of the first half, four seconds left. Here's Springer, fires to the end zone, trying to squeeze it in there, does not. Ooh. Still leaves a second on the clock. Yep. So do they kick it now? I see Joe Belanda walking down the sideline. Offense stays on the field. These are the decisions Coach Garrett gets paid the big bucks for. <laughs> yeah. Well, they've had a couple shots at it, and uh, instead of looking for a fade to your 6'5 receiver, they're trying to squeeze and jam it in across the middle. Yeah, I don't uh, – <laughs> I don't know. Well, trips to the near side with one second left. Looks like Dwenger's going to call their last timeout. It's a wise decision there. Might as well use it. 
Yeah. You don't get to take it to second half. We'll keep things right here. I, I think it's very interesting. They were lining up with trips. Sioka was the middle receiver there. Yeah, you're at the 12-yard line. There's a couple of different things that you can do. You, but I think you've got to throw the ball to one of your best. It's yeah. got to be to Sioka or to O'Keefe, one way or another. You can run a, a rub route, a pick route. You can throw a fade to, to Sioka. Um, I, you know, maybe a rub route or a, a pick route to to O'Keefe on a, sort of an out cut would be uh, a worthy idea. I just think that uh, you definitely have to target one of those two in my mind. Absolutely. Let's check in with Sean McBride on the sideline. They had three opportunities to go to O'Keefe and make or uh, check that uh, to uh, Sioka and let him high point that ball. He's got a significant height advantage against this, and I can't understand why they're not targeting him on these last three plays. Having said that, I'm not a coach, so um, back up to you. Well, and I couldn't agree more. And, uh, you know, like I said earlier in the broadcast, I, you know, I learned myself as an offensive coordinator, coordinator sometimes it's players and not plays. Well, Sioka's a player, and he can make plays. How about that? They went right to the same formation that they had before the timeout. Here's the snap. Springer looks. He fires, and it's going to be picked off in the end zone. Here come the Chargers the other way, cutting back inside. Saints just got to take him down across the 30, and finally they do. And you had, you had O'Keefe, or excuse me, you had Sioka out all alone. Yeah single up on the right side of the field and they threw the ball to intended for Stellan Rustin yeah. over the middle and it got picked off. So I don't know if he was supposed to be the intended receiver, but I don't know why you're not throwing that Sioka's way. Four shots at the end zone. They never even throw to Sioka and he never even looked in his direction there. That's a so, tough one. That's a head scratcher. Saints come out empty and unfortunately waste that beautiful kick return by Henry O'Keefe. And they'll go into the locker room on that interception play. Your halftime score, 35-7. to Carroll on top of Bishop Dwenger. We'll step aside be back with our halftime show here at Shields Field. You're watching Bishop Dwenger football on BDHS Media Productions. You see them everywhere. That preferred auto bumper sticker. All makes and models. You ever wonder why? It's simple. We've worked hard over the last 30 plus years to earn your trust. And with all the unknowns right now in the auto industry, we're still confident in one thing. With over $6 million in inventory, I'm sure we have the perfect vehicle for you. So stop by any of our three convenient locations and see what sets us apart from the rest. Preferred Auto. Communities is a senior living community including a rehabilitation center, memory and dementia care, assisted and residential living, as well as a nursing facility that served the community for over 54 years. While offering a Christ-centered environment that is the only place in Fort Wayne that offers daily mass and sacraments. For more information on employment, senior living, or to make a gift to support the first floor renovation campaign, please visit us at our website or give us a call. Hi, sports fan Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the barbershop experience. St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maplecrest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. Can First Source help me get more space? We can help with that. Does First Source have banking that can keep up with me? This is open around the clock. Business is booming. Can you help me expand? No problem. Can First Source help me turn this into my own business? We're here for you. No matter what kind of banking you need, First Source Bank can help. 
are back at Shields Field, a quiet Shields Field, as the Saints are facing a 35 to 7 halftime deficit. As we welcome you into the booth for our halftime show. Halftime sponsor tonight, First Source Bank. Are you ready to take a big step forward in life and set up your own bank account? First Source Bank has the perfect option for students. Our e-student accounts are simple to start, and they're designed to help you begin your financial journey. Check it out at firstsource.com. That's 1stsource.com. Well, Corey, I, I, going into this game, I think we both expected a even, competitive, close game down to the end, and we've had anything but here in this first half. Yeah, quite frankly, I'm surprised. Uh, I'm not su not really surprised, I guess, that uh, – uh, you know that the Saints are scuffling a little bit offensively. I just didn't expect the big plays that they've given up in the in yeah. on defense. To be honest, uh, you know, 352 yards, I guess, uh, of total offense in the first half for the Carroll Chargers has taken me by surprise. I know they've got a big play offense; they're very electric, uh, but uh, but they hit some big plays that we haven't seen the Saints d give up uh, really in the four years of Jason Garrett. Yeah. You know, last year against Carroll, Jeffrey Becker came into the game with 16 touchdowns, no picks. Bishop Dwenger picked him off three times, sacked him seven times. They basically took what Becker was doing and completely turned it on his head. Fast forward a year, Becker came into the game a little bit under the radar. I mean, I know he's a, a D1 recruit, but his numbers this year had not been nearly what he put up last year. And in this first half, he has a monster game and throws, I think, four touchdowns in the first half. So, again, a complete reversal, this time in favor of the Chargers. I'm, I'm uh, quite honestly, I'm, I feel uh, a little bit sad for, the, for some of the Saints' defensive backs who've been put in man-to-man -man coverage yeah. against Coverstone. I mean, no one in the city is covering that guy man-to-man. <laughs> -man. They just aren't. Right. And, uh, and we've put him in, put some guys back there in the secondary in a really tough spot. You know, all I can think of, Corey, i got to be honest with you, is Bishop Lures. After watching Homestead last week and Carroll this week and knowing that the Knights beat them both. How, yeah. I mean, I am, I am beyond impressed. After seeing these teams, I am beyond impressed with what Kyle Lindsay has done this year with his Lures squad. That's a great point. And you want to talk about weapons all over the place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that – that makes me cringe for uh, the, even thinking about the Battle of the Bishops upcoming after the way we've struggled covering yeah. tonight. Well, Battle of the Bishops and, of course, follow that with Snyder, and the Panthers seem to be hitting their stride. And last check, they were beating the Homestead Spartans tonight. How about so, that? Man. Well, let's check in with Kevin Thompson on some first-half stats. Kevin, take it away. Yeah, as uh, Corey mentioned, uh, Carroll's leading the way 20 <laughs> 29 uh, plays for 352 yards to Dwanger's 37 plays for 124 yards of total offense. Um, Becker is uh, 11 of 15, 278 yards passing, five TDs, longest pass play there at the beginning at 82 yards. And uh, then Carmody is leading the way on rushing, uh, six attempts for 47 yards, his long rush of 23. On Dwanger's side, uh, Springer, was uh, 7 of 17, w one interception there at the end, uh, 66 yards of passing, and then K.J. Tipman leading the way on the rushing, uh, five attempts, 44 yards, uh, and he really didn't come in until the end. So, yeah, um, yeah there we go. Total offense, you know, they're, they're just uh, leading the way there. Takeaways from the stats, Corey? You know, uh, touches for the Saints – Playmakers, they've got to get more touches for Rocco Sioka and Henry O'Keefe. Between the two of them, they touched the ball four times in 37 plays in the first half. Four out of 37. So that's that's my takeaway from yeah. uh, you've got to get your playmakers the ball in space. And again, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the world sitting up here in the <laughs> press box. It's easy for me uh, these days <laughs> as in my retired offensive coordinator capacity but again <laughs> something i learned very early in my career is sometimes it's players and not plays sometimes you got to get the ball to the guys that can do something with it yeah. and 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 not worry about uh, the actual plays that you're running quite as much well sioka and o'keefe have both had success when they've touched the football they've made some really difficult catches in traffic and o'keefe of course had that punt return or a kickoff return i'm sorry we can see what they can do 
It's just a matter, like you said, of getting the ball in their hands. We saw the Saints do it on that one scoring drive. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, it's almost like they barely even tried to get it to them. Their one offensive series that uh, that you mentioned w was really sparked with K.J. Tipman involved in the run game, and they had some balance between getting him the ball and then getting the ball, I believe, to Sioka and O'Keefe. Both touched it in that drive. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really, in my opinion, that's the prescription for the Saints offense is they've got to get the ball to those guys. Well, let's uh, check in with Sean on the sideline and get his first half thoughts and perspectives. Sean, what do you say? Well, Pepto Bismol ends uh, so now I can talk a little bit. But no, <laughs> so here, here's the deal, guys. You're absolutely right. But it comes down to execution. It does come down to those players. Now, I had lunch with one of the Dwinger coaches this week, and he was uh, talking about uh, last week's Homestead game and how, to make a long story short, you can prepare, you can teach, you can show, you can tell them, and then the defense can come out exactly what you said they were going to do. But if the kids don't execute, then what do you have? And so we talk about number nights split for 17. Um, you know, we talk about pocket poise. We talk about happy feet. Um, you know, I'm not picking on the quarterback whatsoever, but – when you have a D1 quarterback on the same field running the different plays, there is a significant disparity, you know, between quarterbacks here tonight. So, again, that makes it imperative to manage the game the best you can. How do you do it? It's a broken record. Corey and Eric, you're both exactly right. Get that ball into your playmaker's hand. We saw K.J. Tipman running angry tonight. You know what? Give him the ball. Let him run yeah. angry for as long as he possibly can. You know, and uh, and again, we talk about Sioka and O'Keefe. Get those boys screened, get them free, get a short pass, build that confidence, and let your quarterback do what he possibly can do from that pocket and get that ball to the playmakers. To me, that, uh, that seems pretty obvious. We all know that because, like Corey said, we're all the experts. But again, guys, you can tell the kids everything. You can show them what to do. But if they can't execute, well, that's what you get. So back up to you. Yeah, and, and, you know, the other thing is the luxury that this staff had for the first three years with the quarterback that was in place. Uh, you know, they had a young man in, in Brendan Lytle who, uh, you know, I believe he's the all-time leading passer in, in Saints history. Yep. Uh, you know, that they were able to, you know, they knew what they were getting from the, the quarterback position every night for three years. And now, yeah, that's a tough act to follow. I, it's tough for Evan Springer, and it's tough for Bodie Dickerson. Uh, it's to, uh, That's a tough act to follow. And uh, the Saints, you know, I, I learned this in my offensive coordinator days as well, that you can't run the same plays that you ran with Brendan Lytle with, with a different group. Right. And, uh, and you've got to, you know, you got to figure that out as a staff as well. And uh, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Bodie get some opportunity here in the second half uh, to, to see what he can do back there. Maybe he can provide some sort of spark. Yeah, I, I agree, Corey. I think part of it is in the preparation. You can only simulate so much. When you look at the Homestead game, you can practice all you want going against uh, your own classmates and teammates uh, trying to simulate that Homestead front. But there's nothing like actually going up against them that's not something you can simulate. Same thing against going up with a quarterback like Becker tonight. Uh, it's, it's one thing to practice, to put the, uh, the plays into place, um, but executing them against this type of talent is just another thing entirely. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, the, the, you're talking about a couple of 6A schools. Yeah. Uh, you know, these are big schools, back-to-back -back weeks we're playing against here. Uh, you know, a lot of kids to choose from, and, uh, and the guys they have up front – have size. I mean, this is the kind of size you don't see at 4 and 5A, and uh, and they're taking advantage of the Saints right now. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, K.J. Tipman provides your best chance at running back. You know, you know, I'm all for comparisons, right? I, I almost compare it to the 2018 Saints when they were playing in their sectional championship at Wayne. First half, the Saints were rolling with Devin Tipman, and he just could not get anything going in the run game. He was more of the north-south runner. Second half, they put in uh, T.J. Tipman, and his shiftiness provided that different look. 
that actually had success against uh, the Generals and helped get them back in the game. Kind of the opposite tonight. Right, where Ted, exactly. Teddy Steele's uh, wide running and, and speed and quickness and shiftiness uh, proved to be somewhat ineffective early in this game, and they brought in more of a north-south runner in K.J. Tipman and, uh, and had a little bit of success there. So hopefully they stick with K.J. in the second half, and hopefully you know, they continue to figure out ways to get the ball to their playmakers in space. Amen to that. Well, we're going to step aside and be back to wrap things up with halftime after this. You're watching Bishop Dwanger Football on BDHS Media Productions. Evans Toyota is locally owned and proudly supports Bishop Wainer. Let's go see! You see him everywhere. That preferred auto bumper sticker. All makes and models. You ever wonder why? It's simple. We've worked hard over the last 30 plus years to earn your trust. And with all the unknowns right now in the auto industry, we're still confident in one thing. With over $6 million in inventory, I'm sure we have the perfect vehicle for you. So stop by any of our three convenient locations and see what sets us apart from the rest. Preferred, Preferred Auto. We are back at Shields Field as the fans are out singing Sweet Caroline. Always fun to see here at Bishop Dwinger High School. We're going to take this opportunity to send things down to Sean McBride with some scoring updates. Sean, what do you have? you got to put my phone down because I'm swaying back and forth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so around the SAC, we've got uh, Northrop on top of Concordia, 14 to 0. Lures has come alive, uh, 28 to 3 over Northside. Uh, no real change in the first half. Snyder, 14, Homestead, 0. Wow. Yeah, and uh, Wayne is on top of 24 to 12. Going around the area, we've got East Side 14, Garrett 7. We've got Leo 24, East Noble 14. Check that, 12, 24 to 12. Um, let's see, Columbia City 25 to Cal 13. Huntington North 21 to 3 over Belmont. We've got uh, Norwell 21, New Haven 18. And uh, Busco was up 28, and Central Noble is up 35. Back up to you, gentlemen. Outstanding okay. updates. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. So our thanks I, to Sean there. I'm I'm perplexed by the the Snyder Homestead game. Yeah. You know, I. I uh, who is Snyder? Yeah. Well. Do we know? Yeah, who is? That's a great question. And I, I <laughs> thought I knew before the season started. I changed my mind. And it appears maybe I might have to change my mind again. Yeah. You just didn't have the confidence to stick with it. I didn't. I didn't. I, I, I can't I can't lie. But, uh, you always want to get Snyder early in the season, yeah. never late in the season. Well, Everybody knows that. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah, you, yeah, I forgot the cardinal rule there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, the Saints still have Bishop Lures, and they still have an ever-improving Snyder team left on their schedule, so it does not get easier. No, it doesn't. Yeah, and we, we talked about the SAC schedule tonight, Corey. Really, the, the night of the year in terms of uh, weeding out the contenders from pretenders with two different games featuring a total of four one-loss teams. And after the dust settles tonight, that number of four is going to be cut in half. And uh, so far... It looks like Snyder and Carroll are in the driver's seat to be those uh, two challengers to Bishop Lures. Yep, and the uh, so-called elimination game here as well as uh, out at Homestead. Yeah, and, and of course, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, and I know there's so much football left to be played, but if Snyder and Carroll come out as the two one-loss teams after tonight and it sets up a an, an really intriguing finale of Bishop Lures and Snyder, if both of those teams get there uh, and Snyder only has that one loss and they hand Lures the first loss, you have this crazy scenario in which both teams could finish with one loss, but Lures still wins because Snyder plays one less game. Yeah, because of the quarantine at Southside right. last week, Snyder was unable to have an additional game in the conference so they would have one less win right. in theory at that time and uh wow i hope we don't get to that <laughs> well there might be an uproar there because yeah i mean snyder would be seven and one lures eight and one normally when those two teams go head to head that's what determines the tiebreaker but because of that issue now again there's so much left to happen before we can even begin to speculate on that but that's what we're here for, right? Corey? Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's uh, yeah. That is uh, that. That one gets you thinking. That's a uh, that's a head scratcher there, and one that I, I hope we don't have to deal with. Yep. Agree with you there. So, both teams out, getting loosened up. My question for you, Corey. You talked about maybe putting Bodie Dickerson in the second half. I'm all for the Saints, you know, picking one guy and going with it. I understand. Uh, you know, trying to give the offense a spark with Bodie Dickerson. But what is that going to do to the psyche of a young man like Evan Springer who finally thought he won the job and now get the rug ripped out from under you? Well, but they've been doing that all year in, right. in, in, in defense. Uh, and, and I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, as, as a quarterback guy, a quarterback coach, it, you know, it harkens back to my, my thought process of a couple of weeks ago where uh, – you know, you can't yank quarterbacks around like that. Um, and and if you haven't played that position, you don't understand what that does. It's not like pulling an offensive guard out and putting another one in. Right. It is a different position from a, the mental side of it. And uh, and you're, you're hitting the nail on the head, Eric, there. And you're going to make me get up on my soapbox and start talking <laughs> quarterback coaching here in a minute. But oh boy. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to... I'm going to take a drink of water yeah. and remain calm. What have I done? All right, we are set to go in quarter number three here from Shields Field. The Saints will get the ball first. And again, I think we've said this a couple times tonight, they are in dire need of something going on offense. Yeah, coming out of here, uh, getting the ball first in the second half, uh, they need to get, they need to put a drive together. Uh, you know, if any way, shape, or form to try to get back into this football game. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. Henry O'Keefe deep. We saw what he did last time he touched the ball. The electric kickoff return. And he's been doing that since, a, since his sophomore year. Yeah, he really has. Uh, I don't know why anybody kicks to him. <laughs> yeah. Well, they haven't most of the game. Right. Uh, they've been kicking out the end zone, but... I'll bet they do now. Yeah. I'll bet they kick this one. <laughs> if possible, they're going to kick this thing way out of the end zone. Evan Jester, the Carroll senior, puts his foot into it. We're underway in the second half. This one travels out of the end zone. And keeping that weapon off the field, at least for now, are the Chargers. Yep, the Saints are going to go... Right back to Evan Springer, and, and that's fine. Let's let's mount a drive here and, uh, you know, more of what we saw in that touchdown drive, please. Right. A little K.J. Tipman in the run game, a little spread around to Sioka and O'Keefe, and let's get, the, get this rolling here. Yeah, we're looking at 24 minutes of football left in front of us, so there is plenty of time. I know it's a four-score game. 
But if the Saints want to get back in this ball game, they don't have to change everything up. They've got time to run the ball. They've got time to throw short passes if that's what it's going to take. Spread formation on first down. Here's Springer out to the sideline and unable to connect there. Grayson Renbarger in at slot receiver, number 41. Look like, uh, I think that's sophomore, Grayson Renbarger. Let's try it. Oh, maybe Charlie Zerbuck. Yep, I think so. Charlie Zerbuck. My apologies, Charlie. That's what happens when you have so many players on your team that you double up the numbers. 41, yes, exactly. Two gentlemen wearing 41 for the Saints. Second and 10, again, another spread formation. Inside handoff, the football is out. I think Dwanger fell back on it. Yeah, great job by the Carroll defense stripping K.J. Tittman as he ran through the, the line. And this was not the start the Saints were looking for, no. looking squarely in the face of third and 10 right here. Yeah, not even 30 seconds gone by in the second half. And we'll see what Brody Dixon dials up here on third and 10. Going to go four wide again. Twins to each side for Springer. O'Keefe now in motion across the formation. Springer rolls. He's got pressure coming from the back. Ball is out. They're going to call it incomplete, yep, I are. believe. I think his arm was just starting to come forward. Great pressure by that Carroll Charger defense. I think that was number six. I think so. Uh, for the Chargers, that's Tucker Steely from his outside linebacker spot was able to put the pressure on on Evan Springer and uh, third, or excuse me, three and out without gaining a yard was yeah. not what the Saints offense wanted to dial up out of halftime. So here comes the punt. Low punt this time, fielded on the run at the 48-yard line and tucking inside up across the 45. Wow, and you, we talked about field position earlier. The Carroll Chargers are going to take over with the ball in Saints territory at about the 44-yard line. So they, their they kicked it into the end zone. Their defense did the job, and now they're getting the ball back on the, on the Saints side of the 50. Uh, they're winning in all three yep. facets right now. Offense, defense, special teams. Can the Saints defense slow down Jeffrey Becker? He has been red hot in the first half. Come out pistol formation, twins to each side. Here's Becker, looks to throw. Fires it down the sideline, going for it all on first down. Oh, and that one's overthrown. I do not know about that flag. Noah Johnson had the coverage there on Coverstone and kind of was running with him side by side, but I think he sort of forced him out of bounds, uh, maybe unnecessarily, as you mentioned, Eric, because it looked like it was way over his head. Yeah. And, and in high school football, you don't have the uh, – Uncatchable. Uncatchable, yes, right. thank you. Uh, the uncatchable rule where they wave that flag off. So so they called, two officials called it, quite frankly. Both of them threw flags there. That is so tough to call that when you have two receivers running side by side, bumping and jostling for position. That is a tough call for the Saints. So first and ten on the Saints' 30-yard line. And this time the penalty is going to go against Carroll. <laughs> you got to sort of hand it to the Chargers. You know, they were going for the jugular there, right? <laughs> Double move on the out and up right out of the gate in the second half. And yeah. uh, that takes a little bit of moxie. Coach Andy Papagiannis is trying to stick a fork in the Saints. That's what's trying to be done there. He had so much fun in the first half, he could yeah. not wait for that play call. You're probably right. Five yards back on the procedure penalty. Makes it a first and 15 Carroll at the Dwanger 35. Spread formation again. Here's Becker. Looks to throw. Pressure coming. Fires it out to the sideline, and the receiver makes the catch. Gains about eight yards. Yeah, Coverstone on the catch. Quick out route. Pretty good coverage there by Noah Johnson. Did a good job getting to him and getting him down. Gain of only, well, I should say after the penalty, it's a gain of about eight. Yeah. You can just see the chemistry on display between Becker and Coverstone playing together for three years on varsity. Becker to throw again. 
Got pressure this time, flushed out to the right. Back pedals. Can the Saints catch him? He gets rid of the football, jump ball down the sideline, and out of bounds. And that's great job by the Saints defense there, keeping him in the pocket. He had nowhere to escape outside. They kept him up the middle in the pocket, and, uh, and he took a big shot there in getting rid of that football out of bounds. It's going to be third and seven. Trips to the near side. Becker awaiting the snap, and he's going to roll to his right. Sets his feet, fires across the middle, and overthrown. Looked like he was looking for Rudolph on the crossing pattern. That's exactly right. And Colin Vance was there, Noah Johnson as well. Good job on that coverage by the Saints. And we'll see. Carroll may just go for it. They're sort of down here in the no man's land. Uh, they've got a kicker who can kick that, but what's another right. three at this point going to do for you? <laughs> they're probably going for seven. It appears that's just what they're doing. Offense on the field. Trips to the near side this time for Becker and the pistol. Fourth and seven. Saints need a stop. Becker to throw. Fires it. And overthrown. The defense was there, and the Saints turned the ball over on downs. Yeah, nice job by the Saints defense. They bent but uh, didn't break on that particular series. And, and that right there, that play was sort of what we talked about in the pregame about accuracy with, with, right. with Jeff Becker. Uh, great quarterback, don't get me wrong, but he's completing about 53% of his passes on the season. And, uh, and that one was, was over the head of his receiver, quite frankly. So the Saints defense able to answer the call after Carroll got the ball at the Dwanger 45 to start that drive. Saints limit the damage and have the ball back with 10-12 to go. Trips to the near side for Springer. Fires it. It is caught by Sioka, and he puts his head down, able to pick up about two and a half yards. I like the play call, a little slip screen to the, to the wide receiver, Sioka. Uh, get the ball to one of your best players in space. There's a little bit of extracurricular going on down there in the pile, yeah. but uh, nothing was called. They'll let him play. A lot of emotions on the field tonight. Carroll looking for their first win over Dwanger in the last four tries. Trips the top of the screen. Nearly some movement before the snap. Springer's going to roll to his right, trying to escape the pressure, and he cannot. Yeah, that you know, he, he tried to escape there. He didn't have anybody open or wasn't comfortable with what he saw initially and then escaped the, tried to escape the pocket, and that just really not part of his game. Look like Ashton Pesetsky on the sack. Yeah, you got to hand it to the Carroll defense. They are uh, they're covering well downfield and uh, and forcing Springer out of the pocket and then tracking him down. Third and fifteen. Yep, yeah, just like that. Saints still looking for any positive yardage this half. Here is Springer. He's got some time. Steps up into the pocket. Fires it for Sioka. It is incomplete. Yeah, and uh, I like them going after Rocco, but he was thrown into triple coverage on that one. Sioka a bit fired up there. He did have a couple defenders all over him. And thus far, second half, two possessions for the Saints and a total of negative five yards. And again, we talk about the pressure put on the Saints defense to keep them in the game. We're going to see that again off the punt. This one goes out of bounds near midfield. We'll see where they spot it. And the Chargers, again, are going to have great field position for this drive at their own 48. So 35-7 your score, 8.44 to go in quarter number three. Bodie Dickerson warming up on the sideline. That may or may not mean something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we shall see. Carroll back on offense. Carroll, it's going to be Becker handing off this time. Keep it on the ground. And look like 
That was Carmody on the carry. Gains two yards on first down. Yeah, really good job defensively there by, looked like Elijah, Elijah Douche, Elijah for, for, the, for the Saints up front, getting an opportunity to play on the D line. Second and eight Chargers. Twin wideouts to each side for Becker. Here's a snap, looking to throw. Fires into the flats, Coverstone catches it, turns the corner and picks up the Carroll first down inside the 40 yard line. They've got that play any time they want it. Yeah. I mean, he is so quick off the line of scrimmage and he runs great routes. That's one of the things that Andy Papagiannis, I'm not giving enough credit to Coach Papagiannis because <laughs> he is their wide receiver guy. He played wide receiver himself, and their wide receivers are technicians when it comes to route running, and that's what Coverstone has become, and he's really tough to guard because of it. Yeah. Quick, elusive, turns on a dime, and that time turned outside, turned it upfield for about 15 yards. Pistol again, here's Becker. Looks to throw, steps up in the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run. The Saints are there trying to usher him to the sideline. Becker, though, able to pick up eight yards down inside the 30-yard line, make it nine yards. Yep, just he, he escaped up the middle, which is what the Saints want, but they didn't have anybody there to really stop him, and he's able to then work his way to the sideline. Sam Campbell does a pretty good job of coming up and forcing him out of bounds, but not until he gained nine. Same formation for Carroll. It's going to be second and a short two. Carmody through the middle, finds a hole, down to about the 27. That's going to be just enough for a Carroll first down. Yep, just a little power run game up the middle there and uh, pick up that first down and move the chains. Thirty-five to seven, and in what is likely an eye-opening score across the SAC. Becker fakes the handoff this time, fires it, and overthrows his man. That was looking for 25, Gabe Starks. Yeah, another one where he had the receiver open, just overthrew him. I don't think he ever got his feet set in and, uh, and making yeah. that throw. And, uh, you know, accuracy issues uh, come up here and there with, with Becker. Yeah, it looked like he's still uh, maybe a bit shaken up after that run. Going to be second and ten, shifting personnel around. And now three wide receivers to the near side of the field. Becker hands it off. Carmody looking to cut it up, does so, gets inside the 20, close to another Carroll first down. Yeah, really nice little run play there. Looked like they ran sort of a buck sweep where they pulled both guards out in front to the right. That's an old wing T play. Uh, but they're running it out of the shotgun. So nice looking play for the Chargers. Picked up about nine and a half. Carroll inside the red zone looking to add to their lead. They lead by four scores at 35 to seven as we tick down inside seven minutes to go in quarter number three. Full house T backfield. Snap inside and a hole there for the running back. That was number 10, Dylan Bennett. Yeah, that's a power run if I've ever seen one. He was steamrolling through there, and that's a that's a short yardage, that uh, power T, and uh, and now he's hurt from it. Yeah, first carry of the night. Let's hope he's just cramping up. He plays every down at linebacker, yeah. so uh, bringing him in on offense. Uh, if he doesn't get up, Coach Dinan's going to say, you're never playing <laughs> offense again. Coach, it was a fluke, I promise. <laughs> He's probably been begging to play where he can touch the football all season long, and, uh, yeah, it looks like a cramp, hopefully. Yep. Well, the, as they stretch things out, we're going to take a short 30-second break. You're watching Bishop Dwanger Football on BD Media Productions. Evans Toyota is locally owned and proudly supports Bishop Winger. Let's go see!
trying desperately to get a stop here. This would be a spectacular time for a turnover, wouldn't it? Oh, man, that's a great point. We haven't really f had the seen the Saints force many of those the last two weeks. Becker to the end zone, oh. and instead it is a perfectly placed ball that falls into the breadbasket for another Carroll touchdown. Yeah, Colin Vance was on the coverage of Rudolph there in the back of the end zone across the back line, and uh, Becker just, I mean, I was giving him a hard time a few plays ago about accuracy, but you could not have thrown that ball any better. Not at all. You know, Corey, I was, we were there at part of the Redeemer crew at a Becker's first start. His sophomore year, week one, as the Chargers hosted Lures. And that was a 42-0 Charger victory as the PAT is up and good. And I remember distinctly on that broadcast talking about how what a luxury it is for the Chargers to have a talent like this at quarterback for three full varsity seasons. <laughs> Seems like he's been there forever. It does. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break here. After that touchdown and PAT, your score, Carroll 42, Bishop Dwanger 7. You're watching Bishop Dwanger Football on BDHS Media Productions. Welcome back, folks. Chargers up by 35, and Corey, you know what that means. Yeah, we were just talking about it at the break. Uh, to my knowledge, this is the first time since this rule has come into existence yep. that the Saints have been the victim of the running clock. I don't think I have ever seen it and didn't re think I would ever see it. Nope. Another touchback as O'Keefe. Walks five yards deep into the end zone to field that one. Well, you know, and, and make no mistake, that touchback is not insignificant. It's a big deal. And they yeah. have forced the Saints. They have won the field position battle tonight without question. Forced the Saints to go long fields, and we're going to get a chance to see Bodie Dickerson. Yep. So we'll see if Dickerson can get anything going on the Saints' offensive side of the ball. They're going to start at their own 20-yard line. We are inside six minutes. And as we said, that clock will keep rolling, only stopping for injuries or uh, after a score. K.J. Tittman on the run, cuts it back inside. He's got the edge, got a nice block across the 30, 35, and up to the 37-yard line. A really nice run, and, uh, and he's not going to do anything but keep playing hard. That's, yep. that's what K.J. Tittman does, and he's a hard-nosed kid, and hopefully that rubs off on the rest. Offensive line did a great job opening up that hole as well. Nice vision by Tittman to take it inside, then cut it back out. Here he is again, this time plunging forward and driving his way for about three or four yards. Yep, another good run. Uh, guys up front uh, starting to, uh, to get a little bit of push here. And, uh, yeah, Saints trying to make something happen. Take down to five minutes to go in the ball game. Spread formation, two wideouts to each side for Bodie Dickerson. The junior looks to throw, fires it to the sideline. He has O'Keefe, and that one's good up near the, st the sticks. We'll see where they mark him. Kind of ran backwards after catching it. Yeah, short throw, but uh, great job on the timing and good accuracy. Yeah. Just an easy pitch and catch, and he made it look that way. Third and three yards. Saints trying to extend this drive and get something going on offense. Dickerson will hand it off. K.J. runs straight ahead, and he is going to have, I believe, a Saints first down. Aziz Dixon, rather, on the carry. Yep, good job moving the chains, getting something, uh, getting something going here offensively. The Chargers still have their starting defense in. They do. So yeah. uh, important distinction to make. Yeah, this uh, you now this isn't uh, against a JV squad defensively, so the Saints are starting to move the ball a little bit here. Fakes the handoff. Dickerson across the middle hits his man, and they are into Carroll territory at the 42. Although he took a big licking. No, nope, yeah. it is going to be incomplete. 
No, it is. Stellan Rustin on the catch does a nice job and, uh, and does get up. He was banged up pretty good on the play. But the thing that I liked the most was there was no indecisiveness. Right. He, uh, Bodie Dickerson caught the ball, found his receiver, got rid of the ball, caught the snap, I should say, and got rid of the ball on time. This time, handoff to Aziz Dixon, bounces it outside, cutting back inside the 35, down to about the 34-yard line, picking up six or seven. So Carroll, again, they've got their starters in, but they're likely uh, happy to let Dwanger kind of uh, dink it and dunk it here in the, in the run game, if you will. Trips to the near side for Dwanger. He'll swing it out to Teddy Steele. He's got a couple blockers inside the 30, 25, and tripped up at the 22. Yep, the kind of stuff uh, that, that they should have been doing all game, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, just when you think the quarterback uh, battle was over, <laughs> insert Bodie Dickerson. Well, you know, he's just distributing the football, and he's getting it out on time. Yeah, he's not doing anything spectacular, but... They don't need anything spectacular when you have these offensive playmakers around him. This time, Aziz Dixon on the carry. He's got a hole, bounces off one tackle inside the 15, right at the marker, will look like the, about a yard short. One of the things I'd like to see Bodie do, even in the running game, is, is, is run the fake after the handoff because he is a weapon in the run game. Sure. And if, even if he fakes it, it might take a defender with him. Dixon this time inside the 10, takes a big hit. He's going to be marked down at the 6, and Dixon is still down on the field. Real nice running play there for the Saints, but he got whacked pretty good at the end of it. Yeah. And they're going to have the medical staff run out to attend to Dixon. And he has not moved much. Dwanger faithful go to one knee, and we're going to step aside as they tend to young Mr. Dixon. You're watching Bishop Dwenger football on BDHS Media Productions. You know, there's three kinds of people in this world. Those that get the numbers and those that don't. If you need professional help when it comes to the numbers, whether it's payroll, accounting, or professional or personal taxes, come see the experts at Management and Tax Services. Proud to be Dwinger supporters for over 60 years. And Dixon able to walk off under his own power. Good sign there. It's going to be first and goal for the Saints. Ball on the six-yard line. Quick pass over to O'Keefe, catches it, turns it upfield, going for the pylon, and he is in. Touchdown, Saints. Really good job there uh, by the offense. And again, we talked about it. Nothing special from Bodie Dickerson, but he did his job. He distributed that football. He got it out of his hands on time. There was no indecision, and he made the right pick, uh, choices as far as who he threw it to. So great drive by Bodie Dickerson. Yep. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned it there. It's running clock, and I know the, the Carroll defense might be playing a little bit prevent defense, but not an insignificant touchdown by the Saints in any means. They're going for two with the power eye and Sam Campbell. And they'll hand it K.J. Tittman. He's going to pile drive straight ahead. Give a look back at the defender there. Who as points he... at the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. As I would do as well. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> eight points on the board for the Saints. And Carroll still leads this one, 42 to 15. 48 seconds left in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I think when we talk about the quarterback competition, we mentioned this earlier in the season, if all things are equal, if the Saints coaching staff sees the same level of efficiency from both Dickerson and Springer, you're almost tempted to go with the junior 
who has more time to grow and develop uh, as he goes forward. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get in the get into <laughs> the he he said he said thing as it relates to the quarterback competition. You've got two young men that are having a you know. Let's face it. They're, the Saints are having a difficult time replacing the guy who left. Sure. And, uh, you know, no matter who you put in there, those are big shoes to fill. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't know. You know, Evan's done some good things. Bodie's done some good things. Uh, you know, they, they have different skill sets, uh, quite honestly. Um, Evan's more of a game manager and is supposed to be a distributor. And if And tonight – Quite honestly, in the first half, if we're being honest, he didn't distribute the ball out on time, right. and and Bodie did on that drive. So we'll 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 see how it continues to play out. But uh, these are these are difficult decisions for the Saints coaching staff. There's no question that they are. Joe Belanda kicking things away. Squib kick down the center of the field takes a couple hops. Covered up there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen uh, a guy from his own team yeah. tackle his own ball carrier, but uh, he was protecting Coverstone there, I think. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you don't expect to be taken down from behind before you've even reached the defense. That might be the best tackle we've seen of Coverstone <laughs> tonight. Yeah, only person able to bring him down. So uh, Carroll's offense – really doesn't need to come on the field because with running clock, we are down inside 15 seconds. They don't even need to run a play. So the team's to the sideline. Coach Garrett's going to call his whole team into a huddle as they enter the fourth quarter down 42 to 15. We'll step aside, be back with our fourth quarter of action. You're watching Bishop Dwenger football on BDHS Media Productions. St. Anne Communities is a senior living community including a rehabilitation center, memory and dementia care, assisted and residential living, as well as a nursing facility that served the community for over 54 years. While offering a Christ-centered environment that is the only place in Fort Wayne that offers daily mass and sacraments. For more information on employment, senior living, or to make a gift to support the first floor renovation campaign, please visit us at our website or give us a call. Back at Shields Field, let's check in with Sean McBride on some scores. Sean, what do you have? Sure, guys, real fast. Going through the SAC, we've got Northrop on top of Concordia. Last report, 14-0. Lures stretches against Northside, 35-9. Snyder, 17. Homestead, 7. Wayne, 24. Southside, 12. And, uh, yeah, that does it for the, um, for the SAC. Leo East Noble. Leo, 32. East Noble, 19. Back up to you. All right. Stats Thompson was right. They did go to the backup quarterback, did the Carroll Chargers. But uh, a very capable backup. Yeah. We'll talk about him in just a moment. Carmody takes this one around the right side. No yards on the game. That's Owen Shealy. Shaley, I think, is actually how you pronounce it. Owen Shaley. And uh, Owen got the win uh, against Snyder earlier this year in yeah. a backup role. I believe Mr. Becker was quarantined that week. He was. Contact tracing. And, uh, and Shaley came in and got the win against Snyder, which is no easy task <laughs> for your first start out of the gate. So an extremely capable backup do uh, the Carroll Chargers have. And I believe he's just a junior. So uh, th this is great experience experience for him heading into next year. Second down, he'll hand off again. Inside handoff this time about two yards. Yeah, you talk about your first varsity action being against Snyder and not only beating the Panthers, but engineering, I believe, a game-winning score in the final minute of the game. So really impressive stuff from the junior. And that win over Snyder is looking more and more impressive as <laughs> we go week and week. You're absolutely right. going to be third down and of course Carroll willing to take as much time off the clock as they want here. They never huddle. They are a no right. huddle offense period end of story but they will take all 40 seconds of the play clock at times. Down inside five when they snap this ball and he will not escape the rush that time. Dwang are able to get to the quarterback and sack Shale back at the 20 yard line. Cole Carey number 31 in there for the Saints and uh, that is one area where Shaley just doesn't quite have what Becker has as it relates to elusiveness and ability to get out of the pocket. Right. 
So punting situation. Saints will get the ball back inside 10 minutes, but uh, potentially really good field position, and this is probably the first time tonight that we can say that. Punt is away. It's going to take a Carroll bounce and no return. So that went about as well as it could have for Carroll. And the Saints back out onto the field. Going to get great field position here to start at the 43-yard line of the Carroll Chargers. And uh, Bodie Dickerson will come in for his second series of the night. Still plenty of time to run a, a full offensive series here. I know with running clock, but you got 9.23 on the clock right now. And at this point, we are talking about building some momentum for next week. Still the starting defense in for the Carroll Chargers. Right. Here's Dickerson, looks to throw, steps up in the pocket, fires to the sideline. Teddy Steele's got it, turns back inside, able to get down to the 40-yard line of Carroll. Bodie looked down the field, wanted to go deep, didn't have the receiver open, so he tucked the ball, ran outside, created some extra time, and delivered a really nice ball to the sideline there to an open receiver underneath. So great decision-making and execution by Bodie Dickerson. Yeah, all in about three seconds. Impressive stuff. Here's Dickerson, fires to the sideline. Sioka's got it, makes a man miss, and then drives right through another. He's going to be inside the 35 after a pickup of seven. Yep, another, another great play to get the ball out to your big-time receiver in space. Just a quick screen and uh, picked up, as you mentioned, Eric, about seven. Moving the ball very quickly here, chunk yardage. Yeah. So it's going to be third, or I'm sorry, second and three. Here's Dickerson, design quarterback run. He's got some green. He's going to be inside the 25 for a Saints first down. And that's one area that Evan Springer does not give you. Bodie yeah. has that athleticism, can be used in the running game, and quite frankly, that's difficult for an opposing defense to defend. One extra running back in the backfield with your quarterback able to run. It's exactly the threat that the Carroll Chargers have with Becker. Yep. Dickerson to throw again, this time stepping up, looking to throw, fires it into the end zone, got a man in the back, and I believe that is caught. It is. Touchdown Saints on a beautifully thrown ball in the back corner of the end zone. You know, and he threw that ball where only his guy could get it or nobody yeah, could get it. you got that right. And uh, that's an outstanding throw, and not only that, but he was forced out of the pocket before he decided to go there. Bodie Dickerson has made some plays here in the second half for the Saints. Stellan Rustin on the receiving end of that touchdown, and I think the Saints maybe have a new quarterback. I don't want to be premature, but. <laughs> Not our decision to make, no. but, uh, but he's made some plays. There's no question about that. They've at least uh, given the coaching staff a lot to think about this week. Well, he's making great decisions. Yeah. So we've got another two-point attempt here. Sam Campbell with a power eye. And just barely gets the handoff away, but K.J. Tipman does the rest, and he's in for two. I like it. I like the fact that they're not giving up or giving in. Yeah. And, uh, and again, that's against this, the first string defense of the Carroll Chargers. So even though we've got a running clock situation. 42 to 23 is now your score. Carroll still on top, but Saints building some momentum on offense. We'll step aside. You're watching Bishop Dwanger football on BDHS Media Productions. You know, there's three kinds of people in this world. Those that get the numbers and those that don't. If you need professional help when it comes to the numbers, whether it's payroll, accounting, or professional or personal taxes, come see the experts at Management and Tax Services. Proud to be Dwinger supporters for over 60 years. We are back at Shields Field. Saints getting set to kick things away against a beautifully executed offensive drive. Bodie Dickerson leading the charge. 
hitting Stellan Rustin in the backcourt of the end zone for a score, and now we have an onside kick attempt. Saints are down by 19, still a three-score game with 6.42 to go. But again, no quit in the gold helmets. Here's the kick, Belanda getting a bounce, and that one going right to the hands of the Carroll receiving team. Yeah, it needs a little more work on that, on that uh, onside kick. What they want it to do is bounce once on the ground and then kick up in the air. Right. And uh, we're not getting, we're get, we got the pop up in the air, but not on the second hop. We need it on the, on the second hop, not the yeah. first. But, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, something he can keep working on in practice. I'm sure the, the playing on field turf makes that a little more difficult maybe. I don't know. I'm not a kicker, so I should speak out of turn. <laughs> yep, you're allowed to comment only on offensive coordinators. All right, that's very fair enough. <laughs> I'll leave the kicking to somebody else. First down for the Chargers. She lay in there again. It's going to be a handoff, and nice job staying on his feet is Carmody. Picks up six yards on first down. Like I could do some traffic and weather up here while we're do, while we're at it too. You do you want to stay away from Clinton and Washington Center right now <laughs> with the uh, with the road construction that's out there. Corey Kitchen on the traffic report. Second and four Chargers. Spread formation. Carmody again looking inside and cutting this up. Gains about two yards. Going to be third and short. Yep, the Chargers very content with taking 40 seconds between plays, the entire play clock, and just uh, running the ball up in there, trying to uh, to get back out to the 4-5 without any injuries and uh, get back on the bus and get out there. Yep. You know, the what-if game is a dangerous game to play, Corey, but you wonder if the Saints had gone to this uh, kind of quick hitting, get the ball out uh, fast offense to start the game if we'd be in a different situation right now. Third and two, handoff to Carmody. He is brought down in the backfield at the midfield stripe. That is Gavin Groves, they tackle went, for loss. Went full house T and short yardage, and uh, the Saints defense said, uh-uh. Nice job, nice play up front by Gavin Groves. It's going to be fourth and five, and it looks like uh, Coach Dinan's got a decision to make here. Tempted to keep the offense on the field and try to just run out the last 350 and change. I think they're going to run it all the way down to zero and take a timeout. Yeah. And they're actually going to accept the delay game penalty, and it's going to set up a punting situation. Did they call a timeout or didn't they? I believe the flag was thrown. <laughs> they, they took the penalty and now they're going to punt it? Yeah, I, th I think that was the intention the whole time. Just take the delay a game and then boom this one and try to pin it. Considering deep. that the running clock continues anyway. Yeah. So... <laughs> they found a little loophole yeah. there in the running clock. <laughs> ah. The timeout would have stopped the clock. Right. Bottom. So you take the – oh, mm -hmm. I learned something from Coach Dinan tonight. Oh. Never thought you'd say that, huh? <laughs> I like Doug. Doug and I get along pretty well. And it looks like Bishop Dwanger has now taken a timeout. But, boy, if that's the plan, why, well, why wait until you've run off 35 well, seconds off the clock? I think Coach Garrett's got a few questions on the uh, the running clock situation. But again, the Saints have never been in this situation before. Yeah, we're on the uh, on the business end of it tonight. Yep. Well, we'll keep things right here. So let's send things uh, down to Sean McBride for another update. Sean. Yeah, I tell you what, guys, we've got a uh, something very interesting brewing in the fourth quarter. Uh, we're talking about East Noble. 
Leo holds a uh, a very tentative lead, 32 to 25, mm. with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So again, when they had him down on the ropes, 32 to 19, and then 24 to 12. I mean, Leo thought they were going to walk away with us when, but there's a lot of football left to play in that matchup. Back up to you. All right, thanks, Sean. A couple undefeated 4A teams going at it there as the punt is away. Here's my question. If the Saints would not have called a timeout, yeah. could Coach Dynan have taken a delay, delay, of delay of game and another <laughs> delay of game and another delay of game all the way down to the end of the field and just let the running clock continue to run? He found a running clock loophole. That's a great question. That's the kind of next-level coaching I like, actually. That's a loophole. That's a, a Bill Belichick move. Yes, it is. Very much so. Sneaky. Yeah. All right, so the Saints back on offense, and uh, they're going to have about two minutes to work with. 2.10 right now and running. Dickerson in the shotgun, trips to the near side. Dickerson rolls that way. He's got pressure. Eludes the pressure, unloads to the sideline, and... Nobody there. Actually, yeah. a lot of people there. Yeah, I was just going to say, that one was probably ill-advised. I like the fact that he was getting rid of it so that he didn't take the loss on the play, but he probably should have just chucked that one over everybody's right. head into the stands, so to speak. Incomplete. We're now down under 140. Spread formation with twins to each side this time. Dickerson. Going to look to throw, step up, now back, step back in the pocket, looking for an escape valve, and he finally finds one at the sideline, but a bit too hot to handle. Looks like that was Teddy Steele around the 40-yard line. Yeah, he got some serious pressure there from the, the Chargers and just was unable to hook up with Steele, but I like the decision, honestly. Yeah. Third and 10 as we tick down to a minute to go in the ball game. Here's Dickerson in the shotgun. Fires it over the middle. He's got Teddy Steele in stride at the 40, 45, and tackled just short of the midfield stripe. That is a great throw right down the field. Yeah. That's a, the kind of downfield toss that, uh, that the Saints have been lacking tonight, quite frankly, and uh, that was on the money down the field. Saints take a timeout here. Now, I know if you're a Carroll fan, you're probably not a big fan of this. <laughs> the game's out of hand. 44 seconds left on the clock, but I would argue for the Saints, I mean, this is this is learning on the fly. This is a situation that they want to get Dickerson as much experience as they can. Yeah, yeah, and and Coach Garrett's showing that you're not, you never give up. You never, right. ever give up. So I like that part of it, and I also like putting, if you think Dickerson might be the guy going forward, right. put him in situations that are meaningful to his learning, and that's what they're doing right now. Agree 100%. So 42-23 is the score. Carroll's going to be on their way to victory, moving to 4-1 and one on the season. And it sounds, at last count, like the Snyder Panthers will be moving to 3-1. and one. So that's going to leave Carroll and Snyder as the lone one-loss teams as they chase Bishop Lures. Of course, Lures already has the win over Carroll and yet to play Snyder. And Bishop Dwanger looks like they'll be relegated to the spoiler role. Not used to being out of the SAC race halfway through the season. First and 10, here's Dickerson. Fires it down the sideline. Sioka trying to make a play on it, but that one well out of bounds. Yeah, unfortunately, that was out of bounds, although over his outside shoulder, <laughs> yeah. which is something we've been asking for. <laughs> so uh, can't have it all. Saints trying to rush back to the line as the clock is still moving inside of 22 seconds. Might be their last play, quite frankly. Yeah. Dickerson's going to roll. Got some pressure, fires it over the middle, looking for Stellan Rustin, and threw his hands incomplete. Yeah, probably should have been caught. Stellan normally makes that grab, and the Saints are going to use their last time out. <laughs> yes, they are. So as we look at the upcoming schedule for Bishop Dwanger, their next game, it will be at Concordia. So we're headed back to Zollner Stadium. And our first game broadcasting there after the uh, all the renovations. So excited to see that. 
Again, Concordia not really uh, a contender in the SAC race this year, so perhaps a chance for Bishop Dwenger to get things back on track. Meanwhile, for the Chargers, they will travel to South Calhoun Street, take on the Southside Archers. And really not a lot of uh, marquee matchups next week on the SAC slate like there were this week. Bishop Lewers in the driver's seat again. They're going to host Northrop next week. And uh, they'll be heavy favorites in that game, and that will set up a uh, what will in all likelihood be an undefeated Bishop Lewers team coming to Shields Field in week six. I'm looking forward to next week going back to our old stomping grounds yeah. at Zollner Stadium when seeing the new refurbished Zollner Stadium, which we have yet to, yet to see. That's right. So final play of the ball game, 11 seconds, no timeouts left in Coach Garrett's pocket. And Dickerson zings this one across the field, caught by Sioka, lateral to O'Keefe. He's got a blocker in front of him, a little hook and ladder action. O'Keefe inside the 25, where he is tackled to end the ball game. That's going to do it. Carroll Chargers pick up their first win over the Saints since 2017, and they do so with a 42-23 victory here at Shields Field. Now the second team to defeat the Saints in their new stadium. Yeah, no kidding. And the first time uh, in the last four years that the Saints have lost back-to-back -back games. We'll yep. see how they uh, respond next week at Concordia. You've actually, you have to go back to 2017 when the Saints lost back-to-back -back games to Homestead and Carroll. Last time they dropped back-to-back -back games. So we're going to step aside, be back to wrap things up here at Shields Field. You're watching Bishop Dwenger Football on BDHS Media Productions. Hi, sports fans. Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the barbershop experience. St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maplecrest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. Welcome back to Shields Field. Carroll Chargers fresh off a 42-23 victory as the teams meet at the midfield stripe and exchange post-game handshakes. So, Corey, we walk away from this game uh, not at all what we expected here as the Carroll Chargers flexed on all three facets of the game and, and really an all-around victory. Yeah, all three facets. You mentioned it, um, you know, kicking, field position, Offense and defense, they uh, they completely dominated the Saints tonight. There's just no other way around it. Put up over 400 yards of total offense uh, against a Saints defense that uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen that done before. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, hats off to the Carroll Chargers who came to play tonight, and uh, and they're on a roll. They've got to you've got to keep an eye on them. They lost in Week One in a tight one to yeah. Bishop Lures, but have reeled off four straight impressive victories ever since, and two good ones against Snyder and Dwinger, in my opinion. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Carroll Chargers may not be out of this SAC race just yet. Well, it, as weird as it sounds, they're going to become Bishop Dwinger fans in a couple of weeks when the, the <laughs> Knights travel here to take on the Saints. Yeah. They need some help, but they are very much alive in the SAC race. Chargers improve to 4-1. and one. The Saints fall to 3-2. and two. And uh, this will officially end the streak for the Saints. They had three straight seasons of uh, one loss regular seasons. And uh, that streak comes to an end tonight here at Shields Field. We mentioned uh, their game last week against Homestead was their worst loss in the Jason Garrett era by 16 points. Well, they set a new mark tonight, but losing by 19 points. And uh, now they have matched the game against Homestead in 2017 by allowing 42 points in this one. So uh, tough going for the Saints here. Let's check in with Kevin Thompson. One final look at stats. Kevin? Yeah, you know, total offense, 40 or 47 plays, 413 yards for Carroll. Uh, 63 plays, 329 yards for uh, Bishop Dwanger. 
Uh, Bodie Dixon come back in that second half. He was 9 of 13 for 152 yards uh, and two TDs um, in that second half. Becker finished up 14 of uh, 22, 308 yards, six touchdowns. And uh, that's basically it for the second half. Yeah, to, to throw for 328 yards on, on 14 completions, I think that tells a story right there, Corey. Oh, yeah, pretty. <laughs> well, you know, and, and we didn't expect that from the Saints defense, but but I also didn't expect him to cover Coverstone in man with one one defender. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's something that, uh, that the Saints are going to learn from, certainly. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I would assume that we will probably get a chance to see Bogey Dickerson start next week, which, uh, you know, everybody loves the backup. We'll see how, uh, how Bodie does uh, in a starting role, and that's great experience for him. And quite frankly, with two losses and pretty much being out of the SAC race, at this point they are playing for the playoffs now anyway. Yeah. They are playing for the playoffs, and who gives them the best chance to win? And I think they'll be crazy if they don't give Bodie an opportunity to earn that job now. Yep, I agree absolutely on that one. Uh, you know, especially with several weeks left before the postseason, not only – giving him the start, but potentially uh, a chance to get a lot of momentum going. Yeah, and, uh, and it's not all Evan. Opponents. And, and make no mistake, it's not all Evan Springer by any stretch of oh, the sure. imagination. Evan has played some really good football for the Saints at times through this five-game stretch. He's just not going to take a team on his back. Right. And, uh, and and they don't have that guy probably without Brendan Lytle. He's not walking through that door, as I've heard on uh, <laughs> another uh, by another coach in the past. So uh, anyway, they uh, you know they just need a little bit of playmaking ability there. They need to get the ball to. And quite honestly, when Bodie was in the game, I thought the offensive play calling was better. So, uh, yeah. you know, they, they need to allow their quarterbacks to do what they can do, get the ball to uh, in space to their playmakers, and, uh, and, and they'll, they'll gain some yards. I think you said it best there. It, it is by no means a personal slight to uh, young Mr. Springer. It is all about who gives you the best chance to win on a given week. And uh, right now that might be the junior, Bodie Dickerson. We'll see what the coaching staff decides. Uh, surely many things to discuss after this loss as the Saints fall to three and two. Well, uh, we mentioned it before. The Saints, when they allow 14 or fewer points, they are 33 and one, and they're now five and six when allowing more than 14 points. I had to get that streak in yeah, there Yeah, there you go. It's, it's a story I like to tell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us. We appreciate you tuning in. Again, don't miss next week. We will be out at Zollner Stadium to uh, watch the Bishop Dwanger Saints taking on the Concordia Cadets. That will be coming to you next week, 7 o'clock kickoff, and we'll be on the air at 6.50 right here on BDHS Media Productions. Well, that's going to do it to us. Big thanks to Greg Jones for getting us on stream and running the show tonight on camera tonight. We had a trio of Bishop Dwanger students, Logan Miltner, Seth Shifley, and Karen Garcia. Big thanks to them. And special thanks to Parker Knoll as well. Our sideline reporter was Sean McBride, our statistician Kevin Thompson. For Corey Kitchen, I'm Eric Pete, thanking you for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. May God bless you. You're watching Bishop Dwanger Football on BDHS Media Productions. <laughs>